baseball. And last night, for the first time in over a year, Angel Stadium welcomed you all back. Let's go, Angels! The Tigers are going to lose, but I'm a big show Tiger fan. You watched the most interesting man in baseball as he continued his historic run, making us all thankful we now can witness his unique greatness together in person. And you saw some late inning fireworks. York swings and sends a drive to left field. That one's got a chance, and that one is gone! The game hasn't been the same without you. Welcome home, Angel fans. It's presented by your Southern California Honda dealers. It's the Detroit Tigers and everyone having fun coming back to the yard safely, soundly. Now, the sound is coming from the seats. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to the ballpark. This is my friend Edward. Are you excited to be back at the yard? Yes, I'm very excited. All right, so Edward, this is Mark Goob is all you know him. My name is Darren Sutton. Gooby, how great is it to have full capacity? This team thrilled them last night. How, as a player, fun would be you look up and see this crowd? Darren, just seeing all the fans around here coming down here to our, our spot right now and to see what they did last night as far as energizing the players to be able to win that game. A close one against the Tigers last night. Shohei Otani doing Shohei Otani things. But the fans back in the house packed. This is a lot of fun. I can't wait for them to cheer to the victory here tonight. All right, so let's bring in, since you mentioned Shohei, the fourth, since Edward is the third, the fourth member of our broadcast team, Jose Moda. Jose, look, you're a great writer, but you couldn't have scripted any better. You had full capacity. You had Shohei on the mound. Oh, what a beautiful thing it was. I think the only way we can associate a perfect script on baseball, it has to be Shohei Otani getting involved. So think about that, 31,000 fans welcoming the reopening here for the big A, and wow, they showed up. And what did he show them? that he's got an electrifying slider, he's got a fastball, he's got a splitter, right as the lefties, it didn't matter, missing some bats and getting eight ground ball outs. That is why he's the most unique in terms of fielding, in terms of batting, exit velocity, you name it, but boy, they show a complete show, athleticism, energy, outs, efficiency, and perfection from Shohei Otani against veterans like Miguel Cabrera. So we invite you to stay tuned or to head over to the Big A because Shohei's show continues to get even better. And we cannot wait to say these words. Fans, welcome back. This is your place. Yes, enjoy the show with your angels led by number 17, Shohei Otani. Guys have fans back at full capacity. That's crazy. It's gonna be a different game. It's better. Crazy we were here for opening game. day and it was cool, but we're expecting a big crowd and we're ready to go tonight. How loud are you guys gonna be today? Loud. Super loud? On a scale yeah. of what? Like one to ten. Ten. Ten? No, twenty. Twenty? Yeah. The infinite. The infinite. How the angels got here with all the moves they made. They have a Meet Justin Upton. He's watching MLB Network. Again, the lineup got deeper. Because that's what baseball fans do. They're deep. They're deep. Claire, how do you know how much bling to wear before each game? What bling you wear during the game is a very important decision. You want to wear enough so you look good, but not too much where it slows you down on the base pass. Some diamonds are always nice. But on a sunny day, the reflection can get in your eye and make you miss the play. Thanks, Cliff. 
Very informative. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions, only on MLB Network. Push your favorite players to the top at the Midsummer Classic in Colorado with the Google MLB All-Star Ballot. You want something to cheer about? Go to MLB.com slash vote or search for your favorite players on Google. Vote daily to turn these major stars into all-stars. What can't he do? The top three at each position will advance. Then it's time to get them to the peak by voting for the all-star starters. The Google MLB All-Star Ballot. Help put your team on top. What a game! From our young man down below to all of you at home to all the young men and women that are enjoying this one tonight on Hawaiian shirt night. Look at the dude says the halos take the diamond paced by Alex Cobb on the bump in the center wearing number 38 in front of this wide open crowd. Alex Cobb looking to track what he has done many times this year including a couple of starts ago against the Oakland Athletics. This right hander making his 10th start of the year and dealing with Robbie Grossman at the top Jonathan Scope. Imer Candelario, Jamer Candelario, Miguel Cabrera, Eric House, Akil Badu, Nico Gudrum, Nomar Mazzara, Willie Castro, one through nine for Detroit. There's some danger in every spot in that lineup. You just got to be careful, of course, Cabrera struggling of late, the Hall of Fame career he has had. As we mentioned, Gooby, it's Alex Cobb on the mound, 10th start of the year. Yeah, let's keep that ball on the ground. Shohei Otani, eight ground ball outs last night against the Tigers. My go to's for Alex Cobb to have a good game, two and two in his career versus the Tigers. And that power fastball down for ground ball outs. 60.7% ground ball ratio and those whiffs on the thing. 36% swing and miss whiff rate on his split finger changeup so far this year. So he tries to establish himself. He has been even more so of a ground ball pitcher this year. He has seen those numbers spike. He's about twice league average when you look at ground ball to fly ball ratio, well above what he has done in his career. That makes the infield very important for him. And look, when you look out there at second base, speaking of that infield, Luis Renjifo really, and I was watching from afar last night, Gooby, while you worked, Renjifo looked really comfortable defensively. Yeah, and the big thing for Luis Renjifo was slowing down the game. He's very solid there at second base. He's turned 70 double plays at second base, 118th start at second, to spend 11 hours in his career. Very good, a great relay throw too from Renjifo last night. He's solid in field and in the batter's box. All right, so away we go with Robbie Grossman, Jonathan Skull, and Jamer Candelario. One, two, and three for the Detroit Tigers with Miguel Cabrera. And the Angels hope batting in the next inning. Now you sat in this seat last night, and you sat alone because you worked remotely on that great YouTube broadcast. But I'm telling you, it's so much fun to see the sea of red coming in on a Friday night as the first pitch a little bit low glad to have you with us tonight we're underway what to know the count to Robbie Gross yeah this is the way the energy built throughout the entire game with the Halo Nation down there in the stands in force last night 31,000 plus Grossman last night pitched in certainly he was one of four with the walk and that opening loss that seven to five loss for the Tigers he began his pro career back in 08 high school star in Texas 
That one zips over the outside corner for Alex. Two and one to count. Alex working with Max Stassi behind the plate. Max certainly has been spectacular offensively since coming off the injured list, but again, prides himself in doing this, working with his partner as that one has hit hard. Did he pull it off the dirt? He did. Yes, and he held on to it. A shot, but right to the man we were just speaking about, Ren Hefo. Yeah, anytime you're highlighted on the defense, it's almost mandatory to make that first play of the game. So Luis Ren Hefo on a line drive makes a play. Gross, always some good at bats, tough at bats against the Angels. Lines that thing, split finger change up right at Ren Hefo, makes the play there just before it hits the dirt. He's moved around the infield in his career. He finds himself at first base. Here's Jonathan Scope. Big and strong with a whole lot of power. If you make a mistake, he'll hurt it like a 32 home run year in 2017 with Baltimore. And he homered again last night. He's got 12 this year. Especially as an infielder, you were teammates together as a second baseman. You're looking in in some of the pitches that Alice Cobb would throw, so you would think a little bit of an advantage here for Scope against Cobb. I've always been curious about that from the pitcher's perspective, Gooby, as that one is rolled out toward third, foul ball. But then on the other side, and you, you've kind of taught me this, reminded me again this year, you can't outthink yourself, and you still have to use what's best for you. Yeah, even if he knows you're going to throw like a power sinker in, you know, you still have to stick with it. Sometimes as a hitter, you outthink yourself up there to play to get yourself out looking for a certain pitch because you saw Alice Cobb use that when you're playing defense behind him, and sometimes you lock yourself up and miss your pitch. Ryan Blackney works behind the plate. James Hoyes at first. Fielding Colbert at second. Jeremy Riggs, the third base umpire. Gets a little bit of help as that one stays up and in. A splitter that never split. Strike three. Yeah, we're going back to that last game for Alex Cobb. His splitter really didn't work effectively for him. There, you don't want to throw that splitter upstairs. He does get a chase and a swing and miss with it. There it is. He goes around it almost like you would have your sinker grip. He goes around that part of the baseball. Different we see for Shohei Otani when he throws his splitter. Jamer Candelario. A man who was actually born in New York City and moved at about five years old to the Dominican Republic with his family. As they went into the baseball development business in the Dominican Republic. And came back to the United States as a Cubs free agent. About 11 years after he moved to the DR. 1 0 the count on it. That one drops in there enough. He's trying to get what he needs to get, whether it's raising that arm angle just a bit, cocking the wrist a little bit more, trying to get dip on that splitter. As he bounced that one in there. Already a higher percentage of splitters thrown in this game for Alex Cobb compared to the last game. Th same thing with Shohei last night. He didn't throw a whole lot. Of splitters didn't have a feel for it. Through about 41% slider rate last night, and Joe Madden talked about that in the pregame show. He said his creativity on the mound for Shohei to be able to change the different pitch when he doesn't have a good feel for one. High strike, two and two. The count. I love that word that Joe used. But to me, it's such a compliment to an athlete. Creativity. And to do it on the fly too, when you don't have a pitch working from the bullpen out to the game, man, that's not easy to do. So much of what a lot of these gentlemen do is scripted, especially in modern technology, is that one never got there. Everything up so far for Cobb. But to be able to freelance, to be able to be confident enough when technically you're a pitcher second and a hitter first, to be able to freelance is awesome. Last couple of starts, the split fingered fastball has been an enemy, not as much of a friend. It's been hit. It hasn't gotten the swings and misses. Yeah, that's why you see the strikeout totals down. This the usage down because it's been hit a lot harder. 323 the last four starts. It's to 182 with percentage down, chase percentage down by six percent. What an amazing journey it's been for this man. Came out with his younger teammates today. They're looking much younger and younger every year for the 38 year old Miguel Cabrera. Smile on his face, bouncing around. As that one is up and in. Had a great conversation with third base coach Chip Hale about this team, and he said, I love who they are. And Chip's been around a lot Diamondbacks and Mets, and 
traveled as a great baseball coach. Here's Chip, managed in the minor leagues, and managed in the big leagues. City really believes in the effort of this year's team, and to get a guy like this then as a veteran to buy in and have that bounce, that's next step. Yeah, I mean, and he's helping all the young players around him too. I mean, he's a, he's a future Hall of Famer. We know that one of the arguably one of the greatest right-handed batters ever in the game, and his approach. More of a line drive right center. He will turn on off speed pitches, but he's more up the middle of right center. You played with greats like a George Brett as their careers went into the twilight. It's a challenge because these men are very prideful, but they have to learn to adapt. Yeah, and then you just you don't try you kind of guess along. And I'm not saying you cheat on pitches, but you have to guess along with the pitcher and see what patterns even more so than when you were young and your bat was so quick you can make adjustments. Last 10 games have been a little bit better for Cabrera. One and two the count. By the way, he wasn't, Cobb wasn't going to give in on Candelario because he's three for three with a home run in his career. He was going to make him chase something out of the strike zone. And sometimes you got to take that. I mean, as a pitcher, you know, you, you check your ego at the door. When somebody has good approaches and good swings against you, once you've got to put them in a hitter's count, you don't give in in this challenge him. You want to make sure if he can put up a zero in the first inning, if you have to avoid him, to try to take your chances on a future Hall of Famer, Cabrera, you do it. Miguel has homered five times this year. To the right side, that's the approach you spoke about. Out over the plate, did not try to do too much, and guessed along with Cobb for a single to right field. He gave us a great description. And he hit that ball pretty hard the other way. He inside out approach. Tried to go inside a little bit more of the plate and down. The perfect pitch for Cabrera to look and go that way. Kept his hands down, let that baseball travel deeper. Picks up another base hit. At 38, his average exit velocity is still over 90 miles an hour. That last base hit 103 miles an hour for Miguel Cabrera. 2,907th career hit for Miguel Cabrera. Yeah, he's clearly chasing milestones as we put on that graphic. And a chance for a man who has really been fun to watch behind the plate. And there's some danger and there's some power here, certainly, as well. Ah, one with the curveball. The old yellow hammer makes a visit. Good looking pitch to start him off. Eric Haas, the catcher. Last 14 games has homered six times. In the last two weeks worth of games, slugging over 700. And he's a fun story because when he was moved from the Indians organization to Detroit, he came home. He's from Dearborn. He's a Michigander. He went to Divine Child in Dearborn. Much like we see SoCal players get to come back home to the OC and play for the team in red. That's how this man has felt. He really, really is proud of where he's from, and it's been a thrill to put that uniform on. Thank you, man. This is the percentage of baseball players come from that area to play with the Tigers. Not a whole lot, so it's got to be a big time thrill. You're exactly right. Far fewer players produced. There's a good splitter. That one we need to hang on to. I mean, he's really feeling for it. Mm -hmm. And I want when you see it start at the knees and end below the strike zone, that's when you know he's got a good feel for it. Straight down. That lateral movement goes into the barrel of the bat, and that's when he runs into problems. I'm almost curious. I know you need to repeat so you don't do anything that tips it off to the hitter, but I'm always curious what the essential perfect arm angle is for that pitch. It's got to be the same as your fastball. You get the same type of swing. There's another good one. It's fouled off at home plate. Max mad at himself for not holding on. Boy, in your thought process now as a pitcher, you think, okay, let me try to paint a fastball in the outside corner. But you know, he's, he's thinking he's in protect mode, so he's got a chance to punch that ball to the right. I think you stay with your bread and butter, your number one pitch, and see if you get a swing and miss and put that zero up, get your offense going, a chance to take a lead for you. With the understanding, folks, you've been watching with us that it has been a C-plus pitch at best this inning. He's really trying to find it. So let's see. Last two have been very good. Hmm. That means he wants to change up the signs. Hmm. Not hmm. real comfortable with that pitch selection. 
<laughs> That's why I gave that response. Pitchers, once it starts swirling in your head, best just to step off, though. Yep. There it was the fastball outside corner. Oh, what an awkward swing. Oh, my goodness. He was looking for a splitter. I guess wrong. Nerds. Oh, thanks. Let's go. I can. No, I got it. Sweet unholy cobalt. Is Brad's car better than mine? Better sign up bonus? Better travel perks? Is that how Brad took that trip to Barcelona? Wait, Barcelona. Barcelona? Steve, I got it on NerdWell. Ah. He said all that out loud. Want a better credit card? We've got you. From the best rates to the best rewards, for all your credit card questions, turn to the nerds. When we started our company, we simply wanted better sheets. But along the way, we've realized that softer, safer, organic cotton does so much more for the planet and for humanity. It helps your home become a force for good because home is more than just an address. Home is our soul. Bowl and Branch, organic sheets, bath, and home. Right now, try for 30 nights risk-free and get free shipping at bowlandbranch.com. So you can see Alex Cobb stepped off, made sure he got the call. He wanted to throw the fastball with all eyes out there for a long time on Jamer Candelario at second base, and he pulled himself back together. This Gooby is what happened after the strikeout. Yeah, I like that. He's pointing back. It's not he's telling the pitch. He's pointing it and going with location more than likely on the inside part. He goes, I can see what you're doing. And as a pitcher, sometimes you pick that up. And I remember, I'll tell you a quick story before we get going in this game. Noel Ryan did that and <laughs> found that out with Willie Wilson. And he stepped off and pointed at his head and said, you know what? Don't be comfortable in the batter's box. And, and lo and behold, Willie Wilson wasn't comfortable the next at bat. Yeah, Alex is in, is in a different generation. Justin Upton leads it off. Shohei Otani. Ward will bat in the three hole. Walsh is the cleanup hitter. One through four will intro the entire lineup here in just a moment. There's a few surprises. A couple of surprises. You see the second baseman. Renhifo out there, night off for Fletch. Keen Wong is at third. That's the lineup. As Jay Up takes low. 1 0 the count to Upton. 328 on base, 472 slug, 14 home runs on the year. And the Magic Man, when he moved him to the top of the order, Joe Madden, that's just changed everything. It becomes a tired tale to, to share with you when, in fact, he stops hitting at the top of the order and walking. I mean, just getting on. Yeah, you think about his last 16 games in which he's reached base, 16 games in a row, 328, you know, slashing on base at 458, 621, 18 runs scored with 10 RBIs. Yeah, you had me at 458 on base for sure. Jose Urain at 29 years old, 13th start of the year, 516 ERA. He's coming off a tough one against the White Sox. Yeah, he still has a good fastball. He doesn't give up a lot of home runs. He's going to give up his fair share of hits. 92 97, two seam, four seam, slider, changeup. Upton pokes a slider just to protect. To the right side it goes. Long run. That's a fair ball. Just protecting a breaking ball away. Justin Upton with a ground rule double. Don't ever leave the top of the order, Jay Up. And sometimes we know in life it's better to be lucky than good. I love this reaction. He's like, well, what am I going to do? I just made contact. See, I put the ball in play, forced the defense to make a play. Just towards the end of the bat. That's how strong he is. And that ball went a lot further than I thought it was going to go. <laughs> and they're playing way in right center. And sliding in. Omar Bizarre back in the outfield. Unable to run that one down. You see just inside the line. Man, in scoring position right away for. Shohei Otani. Here is Shohei on the mound. Spectacular again last night. He was 0 for 1 with a couple of walks with a bat in his hands, and the walks have been crazy with regard to the rate of late. Shohei goes to work right on the attack, by the way. 0 1 the count. 
Remember last time he had three pitches in the game went six innings the first pitch he saw he had a home run here. So he was thinking let me try that again. 19 home runs on the year that OPS is correct. We didn't mistype that he's slugging 615. In his last 20 games basically last three weeks he's walked 17 times. Otani with a 440 on base last 20 games. Again buried it in. Congratulations to baseball fans because Shohei Otani has decided and he and he by the way dropped it on Instagram did an amazing job his video drop on his own Instagram account was epic. Otani will be taking part in the 2021 home run derby. A little uncomfortable here with Shohei Otani. Not only swings for a home run derby, he's going to be crushing the baseball, but on the last half he had at the plate here. As we love seeing those big 470, by the way, he was uncomfortable in that swing. See how he progresses in this at bat now. Boy, he pulled the string dramatically. Good looking changeup. Last two swings, tell us what you saw. Yeah, the, you know, the pitch before, he found it, basically hit it down on the ground, almost went between the legs for a foul ball, but it looked like he was grabbing towards his hip area as he's following through on a swing. See, that goes right off the back foot, actually, the heel. As he was trying to get that stride going, just a little bit of a stride, and then it's, it didn't look like he was comfortable following through on that one, although it was a great changeup. Rainia has a great, great plus changeup. 95 over the outside part of the plate to Ward. Taylor, what a thrill last night with the grand slam home run. And has that slugging percentage bouncing up a little bit more at 442. Seventh home run of the year. In. He really went into his kitchen. No extension allowed. Castro makes the play. My go to's today for the Angels is my Monday key for the game today. I mean, first of all, my go to's his bunch of hits together versus his fastball. You got to get the hits together. He doesn't give up many home runs. And make sure his slider is for a strike. He gets a ton of swing and misses with his slider. So make sure it's in the strike zone. A whip rate 29.5%. So get those hits together. Not a lot of chance to hit home runs. Up to get a double, see if he can get a base hit from Walsh. Hey, casual baseball fans, that means that out of every 10 sliders he throws, three out of 10 are swung and missed, which is crazy. That's what that whiff rate is. That one's inside. 1 0 the count to Jared Walsh. What an incredible year he has had. We talk about it a lot. Hope to see him with Shohei at the All Star game. He's been pretty balanced as it pertains to home and road. Slugging 538 at home, 544 on the road. You like that, that kind of balance for a hitter. He loves that changeup, doesn't he? Yeah, percentage wise, he's about 13%, slider 25%, but his two seam and four seam. He likes his fastball, but his changeup is really, really good, especially against left hand batters. Waited on base average to get that change up is 327. And as Gooby said, he doesn't throw it a ton, but it's almost exclusively thrown to lefties. I always wonder why. Lefties now do it. Righties not as much. Righties don't throw that right on right change up. Especially with this kind of an arm. Ready for it. High bouncing ball. The flip. In the recovery. In time for the out. Upton's leadoff double is stranded. We played one scoreless. You love to cook, but you don't love to grind. So you get Home Chef. All the ingredients for mouth-watering meals that you make in minutes. You still feel the heat, but not enough to get out of the kitchen. From 10-minute fast and fresh meals to 30-minute meal kit masterpieces, there's always something amazing to cook with Home Chef. Delicious meets simple. Get $80 off your first month at homechef.com. This is my first time trying on glasses at home. So cute! Five different frames to Morley Parker. Oh, this one's better. Ooh. Ah. 
Hey. <laughs> the virtual try on is perfect. Like they look like they're on my face. Like look at this. Just swipe and switch. These are definitely a keeper. I think these are the one. Ooh, these look good. That was so easy. They make it so fun and fabulous. Top of the second, no score. I love the intensity that uh, this guy brings to the mound. And Gooby, I think I told you a couple starts ago, I want him leading some team meetings. But to Alex Cobb, when you think about the headache he is to some of the opposing managers, how do I line up and balance things out, Darren? Right-handed batters, left-handed batters, which way do I go? And then the intensity with that bottom of the lineup, it's almost saying, you're not going to beat me. It's going to have to be the big boys. I just like what he showed also in that first inning. To Candelario, don't mess with me. That sends a message even to the guys playing behind him. So so riddle me this. If you see that, Jose, and you're sitting on the bench, but you're out and you're in the lineup, what what do you think? Uh, if I'm playing behind him, I'm immediately going, okay, he picked that up. Now it's my responsibility that if I see something else like that, I call timeout. Go to the mound. Hey, or approach the mound, change the signs. But he does bring the intensity level to you and awareness level as a fielder, which is great nowadays. Don't wait for a coach to tell you that. Akil Badu, a great story. Swings at that split fingered fastball low. He's getting a feel for that. Gooby, you've watched him and you've watched him pretty closely. I think you see some things in him that maybe you saw in yourself when you were a younger man as a pitcher. Does he pitch better with an edge? Yeah, I mean, he has to. That's part of his game. He, he, the you don't want to overthrow is being a sinker ball pitcher. The harder you try to throw, the flatten, more flattened the fastball becomes. So you still want to stay under control, but you use that edge going out every single batter you face. Really pushing and pushing. He is selling that split until he feels right about it as that one bounces in there. Darren, when a pitcher goes out there and gives up five runs in an inning and tells himself, we're not losing this game, that rubs off on other guys. Not only in the rotation, but also the offense. No, they're going to hold them right there to have a chance to win that ballgame. They did. And that, of course, was that start against the Diamondbacks. Just 55 pitches, seven hits. Batted around pretty good. It wasn't his day. But he's given up five in his last two starts, and his team is 2-0 oh in those yeah, two I mean, starts. He, he still fights his way through games, and he's going to battle. That's that competitive edge that Alex Cobb has. That five against Seattle, a little bit misleading, though. That kind of trickled in as the game was getting later, and he only gave up three hits and walked one on June 5th against Seattle. He was good that day. You can still see just the, just the walk around the mound here. He just wants to get that feel. I mean, it's a hot day. Sweat. You want to make sure you're under control and not trying to overthrow your fastball, especially to get back and get that ground ball. There is that ground ball, but it's off his leg. Now, where do we start with the Keel Badu? He started so hot, and the baseball world was talking about him. Now, this is a Rule 5 pick that two years ago was playing in A ball, A ball for the Minnesota Twins. Didn't play anywhere last year, was just in the camp to nowhere, just trying to find a place to get the invite. Got claimed rule five, and here he is. Strong 493 slugging percentage this year. Including a couple well hit baseballs last night. And instead of being down, because he was down, his first week was amazing. He slugged over 1,000 his first week plus in the big leagues. Then he went on a run of about 30 games where it was a, a lot lower. Then his last week, and you've seen that graphic, he's been hot again. A.J. Hinch keeps penciling him in there. Just off the plate. Cobb wanted it. Yeah, it was a little off the plate, about a half baseball off the corner. It's a pretty good take. It's a young hitter having a decent idea already of the strike zone. Nice job by Max Stassi. Just keep the baseball there, frame it. 
and so he goes back in at 93 miles an hour. I, I think now the splitter should work pretty good. Back-to-back -back fastballs. Okay, just trying to find the the right combination. He's throwing a couple of baseballs away, just fine, and trying to find one that feels right. Much has certainly been made about touch and feel on the on the baseball around the major leagues, but a split-figured fastball, it's even more sensitive. As in fact, he went with the heat. And he lost Badu. Taking a peek at our Kia player profile when you talk about Alex Cobb, his strikeouts are way up. But then when you talk about the hard hit baseballs, there have been hardly any. You talk about that lowest barrel percentage, which is elite contact, that he averages elite on base, elite slugging. Look at that. That's crazy. Would you guess that there? No. No, I, I, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, because he has that running fastball, so you're on the handle of the bat or towards the end of the bat. Same thing with the changeup seam and its knuckle curve. It's a good pickoff move that Alex Cobb has now over the last few seasons really developed any good move the first eight career pickoffs. It's a challenge to do with eight uh, with seven stolen bases only been caught once. Goodrum really is up there hacking at the first pitch generally. Nico two for two with a walk last night. Alex really has as his career has evolved and he had to deal with a lot more base runners in Baltimore. He just wasn't who he was in Tampa. But you love a pitcher that's completely revamped an area of his game and controlling the base running has been one of them. Yep. And that's not just pickoffs. No, I mean, he holds the ball well, varies his times to the plate. He's having a real tough time bringing pitches down in the strike zone. Sometimes, you, you know, you remember that last game out, he didn't throw a whole lot of pitches. He knocked out of the game after three innings, so a little bit stronger. You're in a six man rotation. So he's amped up. He's throwing a lot more fastballs upstairs. He's got to live downstairs with his sinking fastball to get ground balls. Half of his fastballs have been thrown for strikes, just half. So is it when you lift that leg, you hang over the rubber a little bit longer to let the arm get on top? You try to. Yes, you want to slow down the, the running game. But if you hold the ball enough, you're still going to be able to do that and still have an effective delivery. Split fingered fastball misses outside. So he's reckoning two things right now. An anxious body that's feeling very strong, yet trying to hold the running game. For me, that'd be hard to reckon those two things together. Very difficult. But that's why you have to have a lot of trust in your defense. Just feel like, hey, let them make contact and see if the defense can make a play for him. Well, you talked about it. There's that defense you spoke about. Oh, there's that defense. Iglesias ran Hefa on to Walsh for a double play. And that was not an easy double play. That was a tricky last hop. At Iglesias and a quick feed over the Ren Hefo has been solid at second base in his, since his return. That's a huge double play ball. Okay. Taking it off that speed off the bases and flips right over Ren Hefo, steps on the bag. Six, four, three, double play. Nice job by Alex Cobb. Thinking, okay, I can get that double play. Nice flip. By Iglesias. When the ball hits the mound, you have to go out there and almost recalculate your steps because sometimes it can be a real high hop or sometimes even pick up velocity goofy. So that's a good observation because as a middle infielder, you know the slope of the mound is going to change the trajectory of that ground ball. Nomar Mazzara looks at a curveball for strike one. And also, Darren, changing directions. There's times that ball, depending on the spin, will change directions on you. Jose, I loved how he led him to the bag as much as anything. That's the easiest feed you have nowadays. You don't have to worry about anybody just breaking you apart in the middle. Boy, Luis Renjifo is basically a right fielder right now. <laughs> Zara's got big time power at the plate, and he is way out there. <laughs> right field is the second baseman. Remember that play by David Fletcher last night? What an outstanding play to finish off the game, playing deep on that outfield grass. And a tricky hop against him to finish off the Tigers last night with Marcel Iglesias on the mound to pick up the save. Two and one the count to Nomar. 256 on base. Hops right through the wickets and into center field. He was ready. 
And when you're a sinker ball pitcher and you split the plate, a lot of times it comes right back at you. You watch Gooby, Greg Maddox, Greg sinker ball pitchers will have to deal with that sometimes. And that's why you always try to be in good fielding position because there's going to be a lot of baseballs hit right back up the middle because you're going to live on that outside part of the plate against left handed batters, whether it's your split finger change up or your fastball to sinker. Just watching this Tiger team the last two nights, they put up a really strong at bat. Every single one of these batters, one through nine. If you didn't know who Willie Castro was, the COVID shortened season last year was him stepping onto center stage. And the curtain came up and he was spectacular. 36 games, 550 slug, homered six times. This year, numbers a little bit down. But he's earned the right with what he did last year to be penciled in over and over again this year. Still 24 years old, a young man out of Puerto Rico. Six home runs this year. One of four last night. That's a pretty good split finger changeup from Cobb because Castro is crushed. Off speed pitches, 444 batting average coming into this series on off speed pitches. To the bag on one hop Walsh with the play and now a word from your local Southern California Honda dealer. Mr. Smoltz at MLB Network you've done color commentary game analysis and demos. How do you juggle so many roles. It just comes naturally I guess. <laughs> the analyst of MLB tonight answering baseball's toughest questions. Mike Trout, people know he's one of the greatest players this game's ever seen. Meet Mike Trout. Can run. He's field, watching hit, MLB Network. Throw. He's one of the nicest people you're ever going to meet. Because that's yes, what baseball fans do. And he's also got tremendous show hair with his hat off. Claire, how do you know how much bling to wear before each game? What bling you wear during the game is a very important decision. You want to wear enough so you look good, but not too much where it slows you down on the base pass. Some diamonds are always nice, but on a sunny day, the reflection can get in your eye and make you miss the play. Thanks, Cliff. Very informative. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions, only on MLB Network. Bottom of the second inning, no score here. Angels and the Tigers. Jose Ureña on the mound from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. One time, the Marlins number one starter. Look at his ERA against the Central. Boy, they know him so well, and they have punished him now. Overall, ERA against the West and the East guys, only 2.57 at home road. Big, big difference. And the one thing he does so well is, like Alex Cobb, he keeps it in the ballpark. He has a big boy arm, too, as he misses. Grabs just a bit of the inside corner with the call to Max Stassi. Yeah, he's got outstanding movement on his fastball, and you're going to have to bunch hits together against him to be successful. Occasional he'll make a mistake with a slider you can hit out, but most times he's got to hit the ball the other way. He came to the big leagues with that arm, maybe even a little bit more fire in the arm when he got to the big leagues, and he'd nibble a bit, and he wasn't believing in who he was, and it was his teammate, the late Jose Fernandez, who challenged him. Kind of showed him the way on being aggressive within the zone, Let, letting it eat, if you will, when you have that kind of stuff like you had a, a lively fastball with some teeth to it. Yeah, and in the last five starts, it's one and two with an 8.14 ERA, 19 earnings in 21 innings. So it's been a struggle for him lately. What a great year it's been when healthy for Max Stassi. That one misses a little bit low. Three and one the count. I think there's something that Ureña has lost over the last couple of seasons. The ability to pitch inside. He was known to get dropped the plate. 
Yeah, especially in his ass with Ronald Acuna Jr. <laughs> a few times. Let's take a look at StatCast. 3D powered by Google Cloud and what he throws as far as his uses. Sinker 48.5% slider, just under 25%. That four seam fastball, just under 14% is change up three. And the big thing with his four seam fastball, more of a riding action in the upper part of the strike zone, that sink action with his two seamer. His slider, though, is his pitch he loves to go to a lot of times with two strikes, although 3 2 count, probably go back to his bread and butter as fastball. Lost him. Stassi takes the trot to first base. He's slugging 824 in the last 14 days. That's the second highest total in the major leagues. My Hyundai key for the game today going a little Bob Seeger. Nice. Roll me away. Mentioned a ground ball pitcher gives up a lot of hits. Just roll those ground balls away, pick up a bunch of hits, and score some runs today. Gosh, I don't know if I missed you, but I missed the key. It's good to be back with the key to the game. I know you probably didn't miss me a whole lot. It's just but you know great what? to be back with the key. I, I missed you. I know. I know. <laughs> back with my big brother, Jose Iglesias. <laughs> He's looking Jose to continue what has been a nice run. In his last three weeks, it's 31 times on base, 26 hits, five walks, and it's been a lot more of that. I'm not saying. Follow me here. I'm not saying it's straight dropping the back shoulder and a dramatic uppercut, but he is trying to lift the baseball, is he not? Yeah, he's got some pretty good power, and his slugging percentage is starting to climb up there. It's 390 slugging percentage on the season. He's trying to lift and separate and drive it into the gaps. Whoa. That one sails to the backstop. He had squared to bunt. Maybe that's why you don't pitch inside, Jose Moda. Because you're not in command of doing it. Maybe you lose the confidence in doing it. Well, confidence is a key, but he knows. And we've seen plenty of pitchers. You have to have the ability to get people off your slider because if you look throughout his career, two strikes average over 200. That's way too high, and people feeling comfortable against him because he does not take that part away on the outside. Runner in scoring position now. That's effective in. Yeah. Because, you know, especially in that count, you're trying to get him to hit the ball on the ground. He's going to get a lot of ground balls. But if it's off the plate with running, actually, cannot keep that one fair. You know, that pitch before was a changeup that he overthrew. Now he backs it up with a fastball inside. One of two with the walk last night, Iglesias. This, this is a time, especially back-to-back -back innings, where you have the leadoff man at second base. You have to, at the very least, if you're going to make an out, you have a productive out, hit the ball on the ground to the right side. You have to move Stassi over. Ideally, you like to drive him in. But with an out, you want to make sure you advance him to third base. Jose, very familiar with Detroit and the suburbs like Dearborn and Bloomfield Hills and Birmingham. Remember, he was a Tiger for five years. That one is low and outside, two and two, the count. Both pitchers early on are fighting their secondary pitches. Boy, hardest, highest hard hit percentage allowed. Garrett Rich to the top at 53.9, but Rainey up there, 46.6%. Big swing and a miss over the top of a sinking fastball. Boy, it looked like the bottom fell out of that one. That's twice now. The Angels with a man on second with no outs had strikeouts. Otani struck out in the first, and now Iglesias here. Swings over top of this two-seamer. It was almost as like if he was trying to pull that baseball and lift it in the air. It's tough to lift the ball in the air against him. Trust me, when I was on the mound, if you had a hitter up there trying to hit Baseballs in the air, you were at a great advantage at, against them because it's going to run towards the end of the bat. You want to make sure you stay true to your swing and hit the ball up the middle or the other way. So if I'm to listen to you as Keen Wong digs in, he's kind of giving you that swinging sacrifice. Yes, he's giving you an opportunity to hit the ball to the right side. It's tough to strike out people generally in the lower third of the strike zone with your fastball. It's really, really difficult. And you look at his strikeout numbers, you can tell. This 37 strikeouts and 61 innings pitch coming in in the game, but two tonight in two innings. 
In a time in the game where strikeouts are on every street corner. Every pitcher's strikeout rate has gone up. This man's hasn't. It's below his career average, and he's well below league average. He doubled last night. He needed a night last night. His previous 11 games, he had scuffled one of 21 without a walk as well. Fletch gets the night off, which means he's available. Split the plate, Owen won the count. It's a pretty good movement on a 93 mile an hour fastball. There he is. There's your pinch hitter in the eighth trying to drive in a run. Sit tight, you'll see him soon. Good take. We see both Cobb and Urania do the same thing. It's I'm a sinker baller, watch me rise the fastball. Yeah, and so far as fastball, he's throwing 11 of them, nine of them been for strikes, but it was sinker. Outfield straight up, infield not a dramatic shift. Maybe one step to pull. Great shot of folks still filing in. What a great angle that is. You're sitting with the fans now, folks. Drives that one into center field. Wong liked it. Hustling on around to Stassi. He will score the halo strike first. Keen Wong, good night last night, good night tonight. Yeah, when you're a sinker ball pitcher and you elevate a fastball upstairs, it's a good chance you're going to make good contact. And Keen Wong did that, picking up his fifth RBI of the season. And all the interchangeable parts that Joe Maddon has used during this stretch, whether it's Anthony Rendon being out or Mike Trout, have come through in key moments, bringing the hands up. That's above the letters. And right back up the middle for an RBI single. That is launch angle, which means get your launch angle even with a baseball with a top hand. Outstanding job there by Juan. And the modern hitter, I mean the hitter over the last three or four years, is capable of doing that more than any generation in the past. And understanding it, because now you're able to practice it more. Juan Lagares. Last six games, six hits, and a walk. Runner was on the move. Yeah, I think that's the best thing you could do against Rina is the guy to go hit and run because he's a ground ball pitcher. So there's a good chance he's not a big strikeout guy, so he's, you're going to make contact against him. And with the infielders moving, there's a chance there's a spot in that infield where if you hit the ball on the ground, it's going to go through. You go first to third. Try to do that throughout this entire game. Not easy to steal a base against. Two stolen bases in four attempts. He's pretty quick to the plate. He's been good his whole career. We talked about Cobb and kind of the transformation from Caterpillar to Butterfly as far as holding runners. But this man's been good since getting to the big leagues. He's only allowed 18 stolen bases against him his entire career. That's a right-handed pitcher. And he's going to have some traffic with some base runners, whether it's walks or hits. A lot of walks this year, too. Toward the right center field gap. Nearly overran it out there, Badu. Akil came on, came on. Suddenly had to go into an emergency leap, two outs. That would have been an empty feeling. Halos fans would have loved it. And he's probably a little more carry than the dude thought. And Wong did a nice job of getting in there just in case that got over his head because he's going to be able to cruise around easily to third base, if not score on that one if it gets by him. Luis Renihifo with his glove, with his bat. Really was fun to watch. Played like a very confident player last night. As he goes right to work and rolls it into the Tigers' dugout. It's a year in which, in the major leagues, as an Angel, he's 3 of 18 with a walk. At Salt Lake City AAA, in 30 games, it was a 4 0 2 on base with five home runs. Changeup is really good. He sells out with his arm action. Well, you kind of have kneecaps and elbows flying at the plate with his delivery. 
falls into the dugout as he throws it. Pulls that one foul. There's another. There's something about when you're striding and standing tall defensively. No matter what happens with the bat in your hands, it makes such a such a difference. A young man out of Venezuela he began his career as a pro in 2013 with the Mariners. Was a Ray and an Angel. You get the call back. Boom! You're in the lineup. Your glove is helping, and a big win in front of a packed house. Well, with two strikes now at Renhefo, there's a lot of room right down the third base side by the line. Let's let that baseball get a little deeper, especially if he throws a two seam or sinker. Just put the barrel of the bat on it and just punch it down the line. These are the times as a pitcher, though, with an 0 2 count, you're anticipating that he may be on the move if I throw a secondary pitch in the dirt. That's why you're seeing some throws over there. Runner is on the move into the dirt. Well executed by the Tigers. Haas put it right on top of the bag. He had a friend too. There was a beautiful tag popped down. Wong took off. And you like this. This is a good effort. With a throw like that, it is squelched. Good drill. Pops it down. Push your favorite players to the top. The Midsummer Classic in Colorado with the Google MLB All-Star Battle. Something to cheer about. Go to MLB.com slash vote or search for your favorite players on Google. Vote daily to turn these major stars into all-stars. What can't he do? The top three in each position will advance. Then it's time to get them to the peak by voting for the all-star starter. The Google MLB All-Star Battle. Help put your team on top. What a game. Get closer to the action. You gotta be kidding me. Closer to the big blast. Way, way, way out of here. Closer to the great grab. Took a home run away. Closer to the jaw dropping play. Unbelievable. With more highlights. He struck him out. More analysis. That's a big uplifting play for a pitcher. And more live look ins. Wow. Nobody gets you closer to the game. Every night. Only on MLB Network. Great pitch in by Kian Wong as he elevates his swing plane, drives a fastball into center field, and because of that, he and his mates are on top of the Detroit Tigers by a score of one to nothing. Alex Cobb goes back to work. It's back to the top of the order. Grossman, Scope, and Candelario keep an eye on that matchup. Remember, he was warning Candelario, quit peeking, quit giving location what you're seeing from second base. Ball, strike one to start him off. And you'll see that as the game progresses, his knuckle curve, if he's feeling good, no blister issue, he'll throw his knuckle curve, especially early. Tries to sell a fastball upstairs. One and one the count on Grossman. Lined out to the second baseman back in the first inning. Houston, Minnesota, Oakland, Detroit. And he's heating up at the wrong time for the Angels. Got on twice last night, but his last couple of weeks were really good. Yeah. 
even though Cobb has really elevated his strikeout numbers, my guess is as a defender, you're extra on alert behind him. Yeah, especially in infield, you're always on your toes. It doesn't matter if you're a third baseman, first baseman, second or short. There's going to be some action your way. And so far, there's been some off-balance swings by the Tigers against them. So the infielders are really going to be working three outs via the ground ball less and including a double play for Cobb. That's a good one. That's a very good split fingered fastball. Now that's why you're alert. I mean, yes, the strikeouts are up, but you better be ready. I mean, that's incredible. 60.7% ground ball percentage. In a day and a time where you're, it's all about swing and misses and strikeouts, that's impressive. I think Dallas Keuchel is always behind the velvet rope in that party room. So many, you know, general managers were shying away from signing him because he's a pitch to contact guy. And yet you still look up and he's still putting up some pretty solid numbers. Two and two, the counter, Robbie Grossman. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Hope you've had a good week. That was a splitter that stayed up. Robbie. But forever, Grossman has just had some good bats against the Angels, no matter what uniform he has on. Coming into this series, 290 career hitter against the Angels with 26 RBIs. That's a good pitch. That's a sinking fastball. That's strike three. Third strikeout. That's his best two seamer he's thrown today. That sinker. Throws it in at the hip of a left-handed batter, freezes him, thinks it's a ball, runs it back, catches the corner. Doubt a strike at 93. That's some serious movement. A great view of that one as it came in out of his hand and then where it ran back and catches the corner. Alex goes to work against Jonathan Scope. 1 0 the count. Has to establish that inside corner. Well, the interesting thing about that, they were teammates, and, and I've seen Scope over the years. He crushes inside fastballs. So what Alex Cobb is throwing is a fastball in off the plate. Try to get aggressive on him, see if he can pull that one foul. Because if he catches the corner with the fastball in, that's going to be trouble. I feel like you great ones, and Alex aspires to be one of those, and at times really pitches like one. You try to put that stake right up against the lion and just, you know, tantalize him, but you don't put it all the way in the cage or you lose a hand. <laughs> you, I mean, th you throw to happy zones, but not right at yeah, it. Just, you, you have it start there in that spot, and then you run it off the plate because scope is super strong. Crushed one last night off of Shohei Otani. I mean, you've done a lot in your life. Have you ever fed a stake to a lion <laughs> in real life? <laughs> no. 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 They, they scare me a little bit, Lions. Yeah. I always like to see if metaphors actually really apply to Goofy. Because he's done it all. <laughs> Elevated fastball will do it again. Yeah, look at the barrels in June again. A barrel is a combination of the exit velocity meets launch angle. That would equal 500 on base and 1,500 slug. So that's hit baseball really well. <laughs> that's why you try to avoid those happy zones for a guy with this type of power. He broke the barrel. It's played on a backhand, and he handled it nicely. The bat, by the way, the other half of it, or two-thirds of it out there, by shortstop. That is not a barrel. Yeah, I was going to say, is that count as a barrel? No, that's flying? a different kind of barrel. But that's barrel distance, though. Those are the kind of barrels that you pitchers wanted to actually mount in your living room, right? I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I like that at bat better than a strikeout. I, I always know. did. Oh, yes. Especially when you get it out with it. <laughs> if it falls in for a hit, no. But when you get it out after you shatter a bat like that, that could be his gamer, which he's had a lot of those barrels. So he's no longer going to have that going forward. Jamer Candelario. 
Sees an off speed pitch, a curveball, kind of hovered over the outside corner, but it's 0 and 1. It's be a real interesting at bat here. Cobb had words for him, maybe thinking he was tipping location. You mentioned three for three with a home run against him in his career, and I worked, I walked the first at bat. Buried a fastball in. I think that's where he wanted the last pitch. It's always a challenge with a running fastball. If you want to pitch glove side, boy, it's tough to get it there sometimes. Well, you'd like to be able to finish off Candelaria right here. What because do you want? 60 pitches. I'm going with the thing. Split finger change up. The one two. That was it. Too much of the plate. I, I think if it goes down just a little bit further down and away, it's a perfect pitch because he took a little bit more off that one. His split finger changeup has been around 87, 88. That one was at 85. So he was out in front of that, but that's the only reason why he didn't hit that one better. Shakes his head as if to say, I know what you want now. I didn't get it right the first time. Yeah. Throw him a breaking ball. He went around. Struck him out with the curveball. Outstanding pitch. Hey Al, during tonight's show, what was that meatball you threw? Meatball? That was a hitting demonstration, and that's what I was supposed to do. Right. Next question. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions. Mike Trout. People know he's one of the greatest players this game's ever seen. Meet Mike Trout. Can run. He's field, watching hit, MLB Network. Throw. He's one of the nicest people you're ever going to meet. Because that's yes, what baseball fans do. And he's also got tremendous show hair with his hat off. Get closer to the action. you got to be kidding me. Closer to the big blast. Way, way, way out of here. Closer to the great grab. Took a home run away. Closer to the jaw dropping play. Unbelievable. With more highlights. He struck him out. More analysis. That's a big uplifting play for a pitcher. And more live look ins. Wow. Nobody gets you closer to the game. Every night. Only on MLB Network. Frontier Play Sense. You talk about textbook as far as a relay. Everything done well from Taylor Ward getting back to this baseball, fielding that off the wall, starting to turn his body right away to get it, the baseball into the cutoff. Man, we spend Hefo is already turning his body. How quickly he gets rid of the baseball on the transfer at 0.78 seconds and right on the money. He and Wong be able to apply a tag at the top of the shoulders. Everything perfect. If you want to teach tremendous technique as far as the cutoff man hitting them and doing everything right that was about as good as you get that was textbook last night two things really outstanding here in lineup well first of all the patience by Taylor Ward in securing the baseball and then the alignment will be it's very important that you to keep a straight line towards that base where you throw him to on the ground ranging behind the bag the shortstop Goodman fires in time for the out the man we were just speaking of Ren Hifo rolls out 6-3 his first at bat. He's been doing a nice job the, the big thing with Luis Ren Hifo whether it's in the batter's box or in the field is trying to slow the game down. I remember Albert Poles told me this a couple of years ago with Ren Hifo he said he has so much talent you just have to two things trust his talent and two slow the game down enough to be able to make it easier for him to go out there and perform. He's understanding more to, you know, each time he's been sent down, like when they're telling him something, Darren, slowing the game down. Start with your hands on time. He says he can apply it easier now when he gets sent down because now he understands why they're saying it. You know what I mean? Makes sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. And 
rare is the player that comes, sticks. It all makes sense, processes it clean, and sometimes that up and down is the best thing. So nearly 85 miles an hour, guys, on that throw from Renhifo last night. And to me, that's incredible because that's a long throw. Um, and to set throw, you're not really getting to warm up, wind up, get a running start. And it's in your hand for less than a second. You throw at 85. Yeah, it's all back in your body lined up, turning your body because you know you're going to make that throw to third base right away. But it all started with Taylor Ward, a good, firm throw to the cutoff man to be able to allow Renhifo to make a textbook throw to Wong to get it out. That was a huge out at that point of the game. That helped the momentum going for Shohei Otani. 3 0 the count. Justin Upton had an excuse me double in his first at bat to open up the bottom half. Justin Upton has earned a walk. Shohei Otani. All right, let's play projection time. This is always fun to do. And look, he's kind of been keeping it up. In 162 games, how about 46 homers, 25 stolen bases? And in 128 innings pitch, 177 Ks. Yeah, I mean, it, you think you look at those numbers, say, there's no way, but the way Shohei is performing, they may not even be close to what he's going to end up having at the end of the season. He's been that good, that efficient because of not wasting that was the energy he has and making sure every single day he's prepared to physically and mentally play the game of baseball at the highest level. If I didn't remind you earlier, find him on Instagram. Go ahead and follow if you don't already, and check out the video he dropped today about the home run derby. Way going to miss, way out front of a changeup. We struck him out on a changeup the first at bat. Came right back with another changeup. Just out in front. Played to pull infield, outfield straight. Sinking fastball. I mean a heavy fastball. One and one. I think this is why his changeup so effective to lefties because he throws that power sinker running away in that same plane. He throws a change up the same spot. You show a Otani fans. I hope he hits it off his face. He was not granted time. Two and one the count. Hmm. That's when you know you're going good. You call for timeout, you don't get it, and he throws it out of the strike zone. Just the decision that was made back behind the plate. Ryan Blackley not granting time. Now letting Shohei know why. Shohei skies it towards center field. And hangs up forever. Badu makes the play for the out. I mean, that hung up a long time. He was just out in front. The front hip opened up enough, but he kept his hands back. Enabled him to make good enough contact. He just, I mean, if he stays back at all in that one, that's crushing the rock pile at the left, left center. Just for fun and kicks, we like numbers, right? 100. 4 miles an hour exit velocity on a fly out to center. And that's all with his hands and wrists. Incredible how strong he is. And as long as that hung up, I'm told out there at St. Archer Brewing Company in right field, that great spot up there, they actually poured and distributed 12 beers while that ball was in the air. They made a couple pretzels while yes. they were at it? Yes. yes. Joe, hey, the you. thirsty fans, thank you. Yeah, he was agreeing with you. He's thirsty. 0-2 the count on Taylor Ward. I haven't had one of those pretzels yet, Gooby. I remember this one time when I was off on that night, and then you decided to get a bunch of pretzels for everybody. And then I came back the next night. Oh. I'm sorry, did you say something? 0-2 the count. Ward drives that one toward left, toward the corner. It goes, it's down, bounds up against the wall. Justin Upton, here he comes. Butter sends it to the plate. The relay, the slide, safe at the plate. I really like what Brian Butterfield did. Even though Grossman got to that baseball and, and Justin was this there at the bag, he got to force the issue with two, two outs. And Justin, who runs very well, another clutch hit for Taylor Ward. Another RBI, 25, giving us six doubles. A hanging slider. 
Watch that bout. Get that slider in the plate. Got it in there quickly, but you see where up is at. He's just barely at that base, but challenging the throw to the plate. I love the fact because you're going to force the defense and make a perfect throw. We showed what the Angels did on that relay. Same thing to see if you could do that, and they weren't able to do it. That's the second run of the game here for the Angels. The little things in baseball are so much fun to watch. That slide by Upton, so simple, but he knew exactly what he was doing, getting around where the throw might go, slapping the plate as he slid on by. Here's Jared Walsh. Big swing, fouls it up. Do me a favor. Take me back on the time machine. You're on the mound. You give up a two-out RBI. How does that feel? It's really, especially when you have a walk involved in there, too. So you think, okay, maybe I get out and get that second out. But, you know, you're upset because you feel, okay, I'm going right back in that dugout. I made a good pitch against Shohei Otani. He missed it, fly ball, and I am think I'm getting through. That's down one nothing. Now, this is the type of innings where everything kind of mounts against you because some negative thoughts have crossed into your mind. kind of felt you heard what Gooby said folks that it's it's it can be poisonous you can release some poison with a two out RBI yeah because then you think uh oh and you've struggled we showed what he did his last five games in ERA over eight now if you're on a great roll you think okay I'll be fine that's all I'm giving up but now you're thinking uh oh this could be a big inning against me I still go back to what Brian Butterfield did third base coach he was outstanding on that play you saw Robbie Grossman getting over in that corner. He had to turn around and make the throw to the cutoff, man. So that gives him a couple steps for Upton. And then he's going to challenge the relay throw to the plate. And I thought that was excellent what he did. And Upton able to score the second run. Say good evening to the sun. Enjoying our day with you as the beautiful sunset here at the Big A. By the way, there was some lightning last night. Over was there? Santa Clarita. I was driving home last night. There was some lightning. Thunder and lightning. Desert storms are coming back the other way, huh? <laughs> coming back to the coast to get out in Palm Springs and all the way out to Arizona. The 0 2 in foul. We'll do it again. So, Jared, in his last 10 games, he has six hits. He's walked five times, so while he scuffled a bit, the walks are at least helping him move forward. Mm -hmm. Allows him to track the baseball a little bit better. Always when you look at a streak, especially if it's a negative streak for a hitter, make sure you find out the on base. That tells a better part of the story. He is hitting 167 in his last 10. Is on base 100 points higher. He tracks that one. A changeup. One and two the count on Walsh. I mentioned the score. Runs here tonight against Urania. You have to bunch hits together. Doesn't give up many home runs. So it's those good, easy contact swings are going to score some runs. Got him over the top of a sinking fastball. The fun little things to watch when you come to a ballpark. Watch a man slide with his intent. Uh-uh, you're not getting me. Bang. It's not just because Bull and Branch organic cotton sheets are incredibly soft. They are. And it's not just that they're free from toxins and made by people who are paid and treated fairly. That's true, too. It's because home is where the magic happens. And with better sheets made in safer ways, home makes the world a better place. Bowl and Branch. Right now, try for 30 nights risk-free and get free shipping at bowlandbranch.com. Nerds! Have new money goals this year? NerdWallet can help make them happen. Like getting auto insurance to match your new zero-mile commute? We have tools for that. Want to refinance your mortgage and put those savings into the college fund? We have tips for that, too. Or get a low-interest credit card for your long-awaited honeymoon? We can help you find the one. Credit card, that is. Discover and compare the smartest credit cards, mortgage lenders, and more on NerdWallet. For all your money questions, turn to the nerds.
Great to be back at the yard. Seeing youngsters everywhere. Join us at the Big A this Tuesday. The Angels face the Giants 630. First 14,000 in. Receive an Angels rally monkey courtesy of OC Healthcare Agency. For more, visit angels.com slash promotions. Ah, the future of the sport is everywhere. Future players, future fans of the sport. Working the phone already, too. Yeah, I yeah, love the fact that the fans have their, have their gloves with them. It's so cool. Here is Miguel Cabrera. He's had enough of a feel for that curveball. And remember, he struck out Candelario with a, a good old fashioned hammer curveball in the dirt to end things in the third. It's kind of a sneaky pitch for him. We don't talk about it a lot. He's got pretty good spin to it, his knuckle curve. The interesting thing about Miguel Cabrera this year, you would think as he's getting older, you'd be jumping on the first pitch. His numbers on the first pitch put in play. 063 this one for 16 so in this series so far he's been pretty patient on the first pitch I still want to take a chance with this groove in a fastball against him first pitch as he chases a splitter out of the zone Shohei threw him some nasty sliders last night he hit him with a splitter he got him a chase twice on sliders it was a fun moment when he got hit with the splitter and then acted like he wanted to, to fake brawl with Walsh when he got to first. Still such a great sense of humor. That's a good fastball. Got a kick out of this, Gooby. You were calling the game. Yeah, this splitter up. We were glad. You never want to see anybody be a hit, but you, you got hit in the arm. Shohei obviously didn't want to do that. And then when Shohei got down the first base on a walk, a little shadow boxing. Shohei, <laughs> he wasn't giving in either. He's taking that one off the jaw and then moving back. Body blow. <laughs> Two guys are having a great time playing the game, Gooby. I mean, Miguel Carrera was known for years. In fact, uh, he kind of opened the uh, Pandora box, Darren, on the interaction with the fans years and years ago. Remember that? Absolutely. Getting their popcorn, taking their nachos, batting gloves, gifted. Hey, what? He's having a tough time. With heat? Yes. He's got a good chance on a fastball that inner half and down. He can go inside out, but away. Fastball had some good movement. That's one of those fastballs he'll throw a lot to left-handed batters, but he's been pretty effective this year throwing the righties too. It looks like a ball, and then you got to try to make contact as you see it's going towards the strike zone. Ha ah, spins out of there. One and zero. Oh, the count. Well. Whether you play for the Lions and you're playing the Bears, or the Red Wings and you're playing the Blackhawks, or the Pistons and you're playing the Bulls, or the Tigers and you're playing the White Sox, you get an earful when you go to Chicago. That one's right down the middle. And for, as we talked about earlier for Haas, he went into Chicago, and again, he's so proud because he's a Michigander, and he had three homers in two games, and it never stopped, and he loved every minute of it. He got an earful the entire time in the South Side. Trying to say that the Bears and the Lions don't like each other in football. Is that what you're trying to say? Not a lot, I don't yeah. think. Or the Red Wings and Blackhawks? No, no. <laughs> Chris Chelio has put both those jerseys on in his career. <laughs> no. The one, two. Well, he tried that curveball again, trying to get a swing and a miss. That was it about two out of every ten times, as we said. It's not the showcase pitch for him. But the whiff rate on that is about 33 percent. Three and two of the count. Almost looks like he threw that one sidearm. So far in this game, Ryan right? Blackney behind the plate has been pretty good. There's a couple pitches where both pitchers thought they were strikes, but they weren't. He's been really consistent. on the step back there. And he realized that pitch got a lot of the plate and he was reacting as if that was going to come right back up the middle. 
we see pitchers that will lift that lead leg and freeze stand on the ground and wait almost like they're a flamingo then deal at home for Cobb it was just he slowed on a step back there was a couple hitters back in the day when it was Bobby Benio or Ruben Sierra had that high leg kick if you can hold the baseball just enough you get their foot down and threw their timing off but if their timing was right it wasn't going to turn out real good for you on the mound over the top of a split fingered fastball down he goes that is six strikeouts for Alex that was a good one a little harder one splitter good follow through on that one it looks like a strike ends up towards the dirt that was cool get Gooby you talked about it on the follow through you could actually see those fingers still spread long after the ball was gone and then what you try to do is you're pushing your thumb through that that pitch that's why sometimes a lot of organizations for a long period of time felt that was going to put a lot of strain on your elbow. Owen won the count to Akil Badu. One and one the count. Splitter misses outside. Georgia boy. Still just 22 years old. Twin second round pick in 2016. Left his family behind to go play professional baseball out of high school. We can see how strong he is. 18 extra base hits this year. He had committed to go play at Kentucky before he was selected so high, and the finances made sense. Oh, my goodness. That, that was an A-plus splitter. And a great adjustment from the splitter, the pitch before to that one. You almost feel and, and sense that Alice Cobb saying, stay back. You see with that pitch, those fingers, and how much that baseball dropped. It starts at the belt and almost ends up in the dirt. Try to grab the inside corner. It's got a little bit more heat on it, but that's what the great Greg Maddox used to do all the time. You going splitter here? Be the good one. It is a good one. It's rolled out. High hop for Walsh to the bag. That's a one, two, three inning. Seven in a row, sat down. 52% of men between 40 and 70 experience erectile dysfunction, but many don't get treated. Now there's Roman, the digital health clinic for men. With Roman, you can get genuine ED medication prescribed by a healthcare professional from the comfort of home. If prescribed, you'll receive your medication with free two-day shipping and discreet packaging. Start your free online visit today at GetRoman.com slash TV. When we started our company, we simply wanted better sheets. But along the way, we've realized that softer, safer, organic cotton does so much more for the planet and for humanity. It helps your home become a force for good because home is more than just an address. Home is our soul. Bowl and Branch, organic sheets, bath, and home. Right now, try for 30 nights risk-free and get free shipping at bowlandbranch.com.
score this game two to nothing the score Alex Cobb has been fun to watch work and we're going to take you behind the scenes a little bit with that magic pitch that both he and his mate who worked last night throw. As Max Stassi leads it off first pitch over the outside misses a slider one and oh the count. Max walked and scored back in the second inning. Ready to roll as he chops that one foul. Time now for a quick word from Kia. Experience Kia's tough and ready lineup of all wheel drive SUVs. Rolls that one toward the hole, but it's cut off by Candelario on across in time for the out. Now, the splitter. Yeah, the difference between the split of Shohei Otani and the grip he will throw as compared to Alex Cobb. You get around the horseshoe as far as the, the seams for Shohei Otani. And right there, it's almost because he throws a two seamer. He's around both seams, and there's Shohei Otani's the way it drops. And it's all go back with the grip. You can have different grips as far as your splitter and have same kind of success as far as dropping straight down. Part of the reason why Alex Cobb does it on each side of the, uh, the seams is because in the middle, that's will be his two seamer. So there's not a lot of difference in the grip, and it's not going to tip that he's throwing something different for the hitter at the plate. Shohei goes, you know what? I'll even tell you what I'm throwing. And <laughs> and good luck. Iglesias takes a fastball over the inside corner. One and one the count. It's a finicky pitch. It's another one if you have a slippery baseball or one that hasn't been rubbed up properly when it's been sent into the game that split's not going to be as effective. Mm -hmm. Watch Cobb tonight use that rosin bag he'll wipe the sweat in his hair and everything you can do to make sure he gets a good grip on that splitter. Roll to the left side speaking of all speed pitches good change up just Ooh. got Iglesias I mean just got it. That was a real close play. Just in case Joe takes a peek over his shoulder. Okay, the Lario has got behind that a lot on the throws, a little bit of a high throw. Scope be able to keep his foot on the base and gets it by just a short stride. I knew that was going to not be reviewed because Iglesias pretty much knows it. Remember the other day on that play? He thought for sure he beat it out and he stayed right at the base and they reviewed it and he stayed there. I think at times for an athlete like that that has spent their life running the bases and working around a bag it's almost an audio situation as much as it is a field. That's what the umpires are going by sound. And Iglesias says Wong takes eye and you hit the bag and then you're right there by it and yep. you hear that sound. Yep. Changeup almost acted like a split finger there, didn't it, folks? One and two. Keen with an RBI single back in the second inning. Couldn't stay back on another changeup. That's a one, two, three inning, four in a row sat down by Urania. Two to nothing, Angels. You want that home run feeling? Then step in the box and let it rip. Get ready for the Major League Baseball Junior Home Run Derby, powered by at MLB Develops. Compete locally and swing your way to the 2021 Junior Home Run Derby Finals. Sign up for free at jrhrd.com. 
Remember the first time you saw these young phenoms? Now, before this year's player draft, get an exclusive look at some of today's top young players from across the country. The inaugural MLB Draft Combine. Evaluations, player tests, and your chance to see the future phenoms of baseball as they look to raise their stock with all 30 teams leading into this year's player draft. The 2021 Draft Combine. Live coverage begins Friday at 1 Eastern on MLB Network. And you go back to that splitter where that seams are. You know, he has a spread out there to be able to get that thing working. But also, it just brings that fingers in together on the sinker. That's where it stayed on top. So that way, you're not going to give it away to the hitter if you're going to throw the splitter in the sinker. It's very similar grip. You just open the fingers to be able to have the splitter down, but bring them together on the two seamer to get that sink action. So good combination for Alex Cobb. Throws a split fingered fastball. Misses low. 1 0 the count to Nico Goodrum. Through four innings of work, six strikeouts for Alex. Over the top of another splitter that just kind of hovered there. And yeah, he'll throw the strike splitter mm -hmm. and the one that drops out of the strike zone. One and two, the count, three in a row. He knows Gooby's shining a spotlight on it, so he wants to show him a few more. Is it four in a row, folks? Yeah. It is. Four splitters in a row stayed stubborn, didn't he? That's the wipeout one, the non-strike splitter. I've always been a believer, unless they make contact, why change? I've seen pitchers throw two or three sliders in a row, and they go, let me show him a fastball, and then bam. Until they make contact with it, go with the pitch. Especially when you throw a high percentage. You know, coming in the game, he's almost close to 50-50 as far as fastballs and splitters. at 40% splitter usage, 43% fastball. So why not? Game of hide and seek with Nomar Mazzara and power. And he's looking for it. You may remember how he broke into the big leagues with Texas. And it was a guy who could help you in the outfield. Look at the size of the slugger as that one's in, but it was 20, 20, 20, then 19 home run seasons. That's four seasons in succession. Last year, one. This year, three. As I recall, his first major league home run off, I'm sure if, if Jerry Weaver's listening and watching the game, he'll, he'll say, why'd you bring me up? I said, well, I remember that game very well. He had a home run off of Weave. First, first major league home run. Hey, Jared. How you doing, friend? Why'd you do that to him, Ruby? Those were friends. Okay. Yeah. I'm still waiting for his invite to play golf. I know he can play some pretty good golf right now. One and two, the count. For entertainment purposes only. That one bounces in there. Two strikes, shift is moved on around. Wong comes back and plays a true third. He was on the other side. Elevated 93 miles an hour. He had a pretty good hack at that one. Boy, as a hitter, you're thinking, okay, he threw that baseball away quickly. I got to believe he's throwing a splitter. See if Alice Cobb can throw a great splitter against a guy that hits the ball in the lower third of the strike zone pretty well. And Omar Bizarro. 
Quick reminder on Jared Weaver giving up that first big league home run. And Jared certainly had the last laugh. As he was a winner. That's why I brought it up. Three to one. That one's up and away. Want to take a trip in the smaller way back machine, folks? It was Jared, Fernando Salas, Joe Smith, and Houston Street, the four angel pitchers. Joe Smith is still going, still pitching. Alex in that pause on the step back actually caused a timeout there. Splitter pulled that one. He yeah, was almost had a cut action to it. That means he got it under and turned his wrist and not on top where it would fade down. Every once in a while you'll see that from the changeup from Andrew Heaney. And by the way, we was able to enjoy a beverage pretty quickly because that game was 243, so he did his thing. 3-2, got away with one. That one good swing on his fastball upstairs has kept Alex Cobb from going back to his fastball. And it's a bat against Mazzaro. But he shook off a splitter to go to a fastball now. Outside corner got the call. Eight strikeouts. Throughout this entire game, Ryan Blackney has not really given the pitcher a borderline pitch. It was really not a strike. This is the first time. This is not a strike. That presented very well by Max Stassi. Didn't move the glove. Kept it right there. That's how you get those calls. When you have a catcher, you bring it back in the strike zone. That tells you it's out of the zone. It's funny when you saw that one being called and you knew you pointed it out to us that he was going fastball away. You thought, well, that's a that's an eye of a needle pitch for a guy who runs away. Breaking ball rolled right side. Right on top of the bag, Walsh is there on a slow roller. Castro is erased. That is 10 in a row sat down. It is gone! Every time he steps up to the plate, oh goes into his windup. Or runs one down. He caught it. Oh, you won't see a better one than that. He competes not only against the other team, but against the toughest adversary, himself. MLB Tonight, where the best outdo their best on MLB Network. How the Angels got here with all the moves they made. They have a Meet Justin Upton. This is Mike so He's watching MLB Network. Again. The lineup got deeper. Because that's what baseball fans do. They're deep. They're deep. Angels up to nothing. Shohei Otani is. I'm back here to Moda Island version 3.0. <laughs> I noticed that uh, you know he's so engaged with every single pitch, Angels on defense or offense, and then the input he gives the hitting coaches uh, guys is, is tremendous. And he's learned also between at bats, Darren, to just tone it down and don't take too many swings inside. And yeah, that makes sense. It's probably part of the bigger picture plan for the entire season. Right, right, Jose. Especially with his workload and uh, just understanding what, what he needs and where he's at. Jeremy Reed instrumental in convincing him of that. Juan Lagares opens up, lifts it foul. 
0-2 the count. I, re I recall the movie for years. I remember Edgar Martinez used to tell me that his routine was, and obviously he was much older, but he'd be on the bike almost the entire game, watching the game on TV, but he would come outside just to retrain his eyes to the lights of the stadium. I wish he would have stayed in a little bit longer. If he <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> that might help out. Stay in there so your eyes aren't retrained. That's the whole thing talk right there. Got it down off the end of the bat. A couple of Tigers come together in the end. The play is made pretty easily by Robbie Grossman. Join your Angels for every Saturday night home game and stay to enjoy a post game Saturday night fireworks show for more info. Visit angels.com slash promotions. By the way, that was a lot of fun doing uh, the opening for the game today down there with the fans. It was. That was a ton of fun. The it energy was. down there, the smiles on everyone's face. It was so much fun. So we started in a place kind of below the booth. It's a challenge for our production team. We appreciate that. Yes. But uh, maybe we can move it somewhere else next time. We might have to record that one, though, because, I mean, you should have seen him, folks. I mean, he raced up those stairs. Incredible. Hey guys, don't worry about our production people. They'll get it done. No, I know. They'll get it done. I know. I'm more worried the further away we go, the, the further of a run back to this chair. It's, it's like they're chasing me around with Moda Island. Where do we land today? Where are you, by the they way? Get it. I'm, just, am, I'm just landing back in town see. here. Where are you? I am at the uh, photographer's well next to the home dugout. Oh, belong. you've moved back to the third base side. I got the boys back. That one's crushed right field. Toward the wall it goes. Ren Hifo, enjoy it. The tour around the bases. Goodbye. Boy, all the things that Luis Ren Hifo was doing, you talk about slowing down the game defensively. He's been swinging the bat exceptionally well, showing that power. His first home run, second RBI of the year for Luis Ren Hifo. Covered it. The add on run here in the fifth inning. Fastball, it's ran over the plate and he was ready. Got that foot down, the timing, and they got the leverage. Barrel out in front and lifts it out. That's a huge run, a big home run for Luis Brenjifo. It's great to see that for him. Always has had the talent, slowing the game down and showing what he's capable of doing. Justin Upton has doubled and walked. Renjifo, we talked about his time in Salt Lake City. In those 30 games, he had five homers. So he had flexed a bit in Triple-A. That's just the second home run allowed by a left-handed batter against Urania so far this year. So hit, that's not an easy task to, as a left-handed batter to live to get one out against them. And Renjifo did it. And as we fired up his last 24 hours as an angel mm -hmm. back in the big leagues. I just still go back to that relay throw he made. Oh, God. That, was, that was amazing. That was early in the game, a huge defensive play. Turned a couple double plays yesterday. Hit the ball well. His beard game is on point, too. Just on point. Swing and a miss, up and out front. Rain is on a few more changeups lately now to right handed batters. We talked about that earlier. Why not, right? Mm -hmm. It took forever and many generations of major leaguers to have somebody have the guts on the left side to go left on left change up. Right on right, effective too. Jay up, having a night <laughs> against another one of his old clubs. He beat up the Diamondbacks recent weekend, and now he takes on the Tigers and he played a bunch of games as a Tiger. That's for you son. That's a little Ricky. Ricky up it. Double walk in a single and a run scored. That's one tonight. Yes. One Ricky Upton if you're keeping count. And thank you Joe Madden for that one. Here's Shohei. Struck out fly to center field. The weapon of choice against Otani has been the changeup, correct? Yes. And he's able to get him looking for a changeup and got a fastball by him. In with a 
sinking fastball. The only thing that Reina wants to have him extend his hands on is a changeup. He has no interest in, I mean, unless it's literally in the other batter's box going on a fastball out of it. Top five in that hard hit percentage. It's good to take on a changeup. To the count on Otani. Back to it again, two and two, that's three in a row. Remember down in Dunedin, they threw him three changeups in a row, and I thought that was going to be the pitch to get him out, and he threw it for a strike. I forget the name of the pitcher down there, and Shohei crushed it. So now he's tracking it. If it gets in, if it's in the strike zone, Shohei is going to hit it hard. It's either that or what, folks? A fastball in, do we think? Flash that glove up. That was just for effect. Okay. I think he's trying to make Shohei Otani aware of maybe a fastball up, but I, I gotta believe he's going back to his bread and butter against the changeup. It was. He just got a piece of it. Up to respecting the athleticism of Urania and keeping runners close. A very safe lead at first. Vlad Guerrero with 22. Tatis with 22. Otani with 19. Olsen with 19. Matt Olsen. Home runs. Major League leaders. Shohei. about 20. What a rocket. He went with a fastball. Shohei, by the way, took about two seconds running around the bases. That was a rocket he hits out. Shohei the money. 20. 38 extra base hits for Shohei Otani. Oh, by the way, he picked up a W last night going six innings on the mound, and he rockets his fastball. How quick those hands were. He had their four straight change-ups. Chance MVP down below and up above. Wow. I think you've seen everything from him. You haven't seen everything from him. 114 no. miles an hour. <laughs> wow. How quick those hands were. 41st hardest hit baseball in the game this year. I mean, how difficult that is to time that up after four straight changeups. Well, I felt like we talked, we kept talking that at bat through, and you felt like he was going to start looking fastball. And even though he's looked for it, Urena has gone in with effect with his fastball. I, I, I don't think he went far enough in. No. But how quick those hands were to be able to get the barrel at and line it out. It's it's amazing what he is doing. I lost my mind for a minute when it occurred. Was that white or was that off the plate in? Did that get enough of the plate? Did that get Yeah, it was on the plate. Okay. Yeah, he's showing how he's able to get that barrel and bat out so quickly. Ipe is smiling. As well we all are. Pitches inside. Hey Denver, he's coming for you. The purple line of seats 
way up in right field that actually indicate a true mile high of elevation. He's coming for you. Ponds and lakes they have beyond the center field wall. He's coming for you. Home run derby. Good Inside. Real nice bat again by Till. We're taking that walk. And take a ride on this one. This is absolutely a lightning train from one destination to another. That's that is an absolute rocket. Remember that fly ball he hit? Yeah, he could have had two swings hitting that line drive. <laughs> that last fly ball came down into Badu's glove in center. It snuck right over the scoreboard out there. The LED board, I mean, it snuck right over that and just in front of the row of seats. I'm surprised it just didn't take out the right field bleachers once it went over. By the way, two more runs scored for Justin up here tonight, giving him 20 in his last 17 games in the leadoff spot for Justin Upton. A lot of fun to be able to run around the bases after that rocket by Otani. It's funny, I find myself really talking on base percentage and always will. But I love when you remind us about that. That's a counting stat with impact, right? I mean, run score. Now, it's out of his hands, except for the fact you have to get on yep. the score, right? On base three times, double, walk, and single, score twice already tonight. Yeah, after we were talking about it, I mean, just to play two pretty darn successful years in Detroit. That one misses outside. <laughs> that ball of Shohei Otani's home run from bat crack to sailing over the wall, 2.7 seconds. 2.7. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. Now, gone. <laughs> Just grab the old phone. Just stop watching. Want to know? That one driven to right field. Get out your stopwatch. Get out your measuring tape. Out of here. Boy, Walshy coming into the game, we saw with Patrick O'Neill on the pregame show, just felt that he was ready. He had a good session in batting practice, and Walshy crushes that one out. Three home runs in the inning, all three by lefties off a pitcher that doesn't give up home runs. That's how impressive this inning has been in this game for the Angels. Wow, Walshy crushes it. Number 16. That is a changeup. He's one of the best in the game as far as crushing off speed pitches. There's a party at the ballpark. Oh my goodness. Joe, did you bring the chips? Mr. Schmoltz, at MLB Network, you've done color commentary, game analysis, and demos. How do you juggle so many roles? It just comes naturally, I guess. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions. Mike Trout, people know he's one of the greatest players this game's ever seen. Meet Mike Trout. Can run. He's he watching can, MLB can Network. Throw. He's one of the nicest people you're ever going to meet. Because that's yes, what baseball fans do. And he's also got tremendous show hair with his hat off. You want that home run feeling? Then step in the box and let it rip. Get ready for the Major League Baseball Junior Home Run Derby, powered by at MLB Develops. Compete locally and swing your way to the 2021 Junior Home Run Derby Finals. Sign up for free at jrhrd.com.
Kind of a shocking inning, right, folks? I mean, you might have stepped out for just a moment, and then things for the Angels went completely in the right direction. My goodness, as Brian Garcia gets the call. Three home runs in the inning. Garcia on for the 25th time. It was a Miami Hurricane sixth round pick a couple of seasons back. You see what he's done this year. Opponents hitting just 227 against him, but a pretty, pretty high whip in 24 games. Wow. I mean, that's a pitcher who's given up four home runs in 61 innings pitched this year. Three in one inning. By the way, we talked about that stopwatch that was needed for Shohei's. A little bit more hang time on the stopwatch for Jared Walsh's and some more distance, by the way. Jared hitting that one 433 feet. That's deep into the bleachers. Here's Mad Max. Walked, scored, grounded out. Takes a little bit low from Garcia. One and one the count. Good take on a changeup. Fluttered right through, in and out of the zone. He's got good fade action with his changeup fastball. Good fastball. 92 96 and slider. There's that slider you spoke of on 2-1, two, 2 and 2 the count. Mike Stassi up central northern California part of the world. He's one of his mentors, a young man that he, a mentoree of his, now catches at Arizona's off to the World Series in Daniel Sousa. And it's and it's cool when you think about a guy from your hometown who's made it to the big leagues. Now you are many years behind him, but you watch that big leaguer. He hears about you as time for you. Max actually saying today, I'm excited for Dan and the University of Arizona. We've been texting today. That's really cool. Today. Yep. Freshman All-American catcher, major league catcher. Fouls it back. He said, so you're his mentor. Who who is yours? Who are somebody that you think of at the big league level? He said, Well, I can't think of anyone when I was an amateur. But when I became an A and I was a very young, young player, and I was coming up the ranks, it was Kurt Suzuki that had time for me. A lot of people will say that about Kurt Suzuki. By the way, he's out there every day during batting practice in that first or second group. Every day. Kurt Suzuki. Couple hits last night. Stassi hits it hard. That's a nice play, ranging over to his left. The shortstop, Nico Goodrum. Time now for a word from Jack in the Box. With triple the beef, triple the cheese, and triple the bacon, my $6.99 triple bacon cheesy jack com only at Jack in the Box. Iglesias is 0 for 2. A five run bottom half of the fifth inning at the yard tonight. I'll tell you, Hello fans look good in red. I told you, Gooby, getting back into this routine of calling games every day. I don't know that I recall a set of fans that in their own ballpark rep the gear better than Angels fans. Fought that one off. Boy, what a fun half inning it's been for Angel mm -hmm. fans here at the ballpark tonight. <laughs> yeah. I mean the, the electricity after especially after the home run that Otani hit out. And then Walsh follows up an even bigger blast. Renhifo got it started. With a blast of his own. 0 and 2 the count. Just two hits for Detroit. Just two. 
Look out. Garcia thought he might be diving out there. Brian. He is when he has inherited messy base pads has done a nice job. Not this time though he followed up a homer but only two of his ten inherited runners have scored. Two of twenty in his career that's something he does well. It's a running action on his fastball. That's a nasty two seamer. See that deep breath by Iglesias. He thought that fastball was out over the middle of the plate and then as he's beginning that swing process it's running right in on that handle. A lot of room in left center field should he pull the baseball toward the alley. Instead it's out front on a slider it's popped up right side scope runs out of room. A good effort by scope. Tracking that all the way and then hits short ball. Do it to the count. Tiger for Jose. Up that one up to the right side. They were playing him there. By the way, Darren, in this half inning with Alex Faust here today at the ballpark, a hat trick of home runs, three of them nice. in the inning. Ranjifo, Otani, and Walsh. A hat trick of home runs. Alex Faust in the building. Wake up for a full day of baseball on MLB Central, featuring an all-star lineup of hosts and a colorful cast of guests all season. The fun never stops on MLB Central. Weekday mornings, 10 Eastern, only on MLB Network. Mike Trout, people know he's one of the greatest players this game's ever seen. Meet Mike Trout. Can run. He's field, watching can MLB can Network. Throw. He's one of the nicest people you're ever going to meet. Because that's yes. what baseball fans know. do. And he's also got tremendous show hair with his hat off. Hey, Uncle Dan. Zach, go ahead. So, what's your approach after a bad show? A bad show? You think I had a bad show? Well, you flubbed two lines in the intro segment. How did you feel about that? How did I feel? Next question. Okay. What was on your mind when? What was on my mind? Well, I hope my nephew, Zach, doesn't ask any dumb questions. <laughs> the analyst of MLB Tonight, answering baseball's toughest questions, only on MLB Network. <laughs> So we see Alex Cobb with a comfortable lead now toe the rubber we've seen five innings just two hits allowed he's walked a pair as well early on in this start Gooby I found it interesting I know you did too he was really really scrapping and scraping with his splitter he was just committed to making it work and he's made it work yeah he's finally found that and some movement on his fastball 94 pitches 60 strikes so there's some movement and some bullpen action now. For the Angels, he'd love to have that quick one, two, three inning, keep a couple ground balls, and maybe get that last punch out to finish off six solid innings for Alex Cobb today. Robbie Grossman in the center of the box. Those are nice runs as a pitcher, though. When that announcer upstairs starts saying, 10 in a row sat down. Mm -hmm.
inside. Just looked like he guided that one in there. A slower follow through. I want to make him hit the ball on the ground here. This is a good pitch to get a ground ball. One thing you don't want to do when you have a lead like this. We saw last night. Tigers down 7-1. They were right back in it. They were looking for some free passes, and you don't want to do that now if you're Alex Cobb. Or is that one right down the middle? Born in Boston, Alex, in 1987, was a Floridian, though, by the time he was in high school. Vero Beach High School. Yes, that Vero Beach, spring training site for so many years. And Tampa's fourth round pick. Remember, he was a bat boy down there at Dodger Town at Vera Beach for a lot of years. He's pitched a lot of innings in the minor leagues, nearly 700 innings as a minor league pitcher. He's had some really special moments in the major leagues. Lifted left field. Jay up. He's eyeing it. Backtracking. Into his glove, 11 in a row sat down. This is the second fly ball out of the game for Alex Cobb. That means he's throw, throwing the pitches where he wants to throw. Simplest of stats, but what does that tell a huge story? 100 pitches. My guess is knowing that man that looked to push him through this inning and call it a night, correct? Yep. Minimize the amount of stress. Nice job coming back after a 3 0 count against Grossman. A high strike on a curveball, 0 and 1 the count. In, curveball, fastball. Yeah, and he knows the scope, loves the fastball, and that's a couple times you mentioned we were talking about it earlier, just kind of. Feeding that fastball in because that's where his power is, but it's off the plate in. Try again. Oh, my goodness. He doubled up in. And he throws it high. Walsh can't make the play. All the way in the second goes scope. I think that's going to be one of those plays where Jared Walsh is going to be surprised he didn't make that play, even though the runner going down the line. Yeah, he's saying it was his fault. And then what they're doing is making sure everyone's ready down in the bullpen. I don't think Joe's going to go down there because this is a great pitch right in the kitchen. Jonathan Scope. When you watch the replay, folks, you can see why maybe it didn't come together. The throws sailed up and away. Base runners coming in at the same time. As you said, though, Walsh will tell you it's yeah. a play I should yeah, make. He's such an elite defender. He just wants to catch everything. In the next breath, I'm guessing Alex is saying internally, I could have made a better throw. Yeah, oh, definitely could have. He's a really good fielding pitcher. He's always landing. In good fielding position, got behind that one, under control. This dropped his arm enough that as far as you want to stay low as a, as a pitcher, like you're an infielder, and it gets a better chance of a more consistent throw to first base. He really treated that splitter as a changeup, didn't he, folks? It was only 84 miles an hour. And you spread your fingers a little bit wider, have that baseball go deeper in between those fingers, you can really slow it down. Heavy. It's hard for me to think about a pitcher with that pitch getting it to do that. That almost looked like a right handed curve. Mm -hmm. It's all about just the, the slight variation in the wrist that he's delivering. That's a, that's a splitter that ends up being almost like a cut pitch. Not a cut fastball, but a cutter action on a splitter. I don't think that necessarily is by design because he didn't stay on top of the baseball as well as normal, but still very effective. Even if you make contact, you're going to pull a foul. 36 split fingered fastballs tonight. 37's in the dirt. Two and two the count. Actually scored that one an error on Walsh. Officially.
funny little note tonight the Tigers have jumped ahead 1 and 0 11 times tonight. They are 1 for 10 with one walk when they've jumped ahead 1 and 0. Interesting numbers though. 207 batting average versus Alice Cobb when they're ahead 1 0. 0 1 count 276 batters. So a little odd splits. Had him out front on a split fingered fastball in time for the out. And a good night for that man all night long. This may be his final hitter. Well, even when he gets underneath the splitter, it's still been effective. He's getting hitters a look for off speed. He gets the express. He uses fastball very effectively tonight. He uses knuckle curve. He's mixed and matched all his pitches tonight, including a pretty good fastball between 92 and 94. His bread and butter. The thing. Strike one to Cabrera. Crowd having fun rolling around this yard. Cabrera over the top of maybe the best splitter he's thrown. Yep. What a way to end things. Great get me over curveball. Literally an anvil, an anvil splitter. Yeah, to stay within yourself, make your best pitch right now. Run a fastball up. Went back to the splitter. It's driven toward right field. Has Ward tracking toward the wall. Up against it. It's high. Nearly got over that yellow line. And it's two bags for Cabrera. Sped up his bat with a splitter that stayed out over the plate. Joe's top step, by the way, folks. Joe is top step. That may be it. They split the state flat and as always he was trying to do is make contact on that one. Boy, Taylor got Taylor Ward got turned around on that one as it drifted away as a right handed bat it's going to fade away from me as a right handed you know thrower out in right field and that's exactly what happened to Taylor Ward on that one. He was tracking it and ended up going away from him. Ovations just look better at full capacity. Excellent tip of the cap Alex. It's not just because Bolin Branch organic cotton sheets are incredibly soft. They are. And it's not just that they're free from toxins and made by people who are paid and treated fairly. That's true too. It's because home is where the magic happens. And with better sheets made in safer ways, home makes the world a better place. Bolin Branch. Right now, try for 30 nights risk-free and get free shipping at BolinBranch.com. Nerds. Have new money goals? NerdWallet can help you find the credit card to make them happen. Want to earn enough points for a weekend of fancy camping? We have options for that. Maybe have a better credit card than your older sister. We have comparison tools for that. Or find a card that lets you donate your cash back to food banks. We have tips for that too. From low rates to the best rewards, easily discover and compare the smartest credit cards. For all your money questions, turn to the nerds. Angels Baseball on Valley Sports is brought to you by Hyundai. See your Southern California Hyundai dealer today because the longer you look at a new Hyundai, the more there is to like. By Jack in the Box. Our $6.99 triple bacon cheesy Jack combo is here only at Jack in the Box. And by SoCal Honda. Brought to you with the help of your SoCal Honda dealers. Follow at Helpful Honda and they can help you too. Good to see this man going to work. An electric arm, the swift breaking ball. In a game a couple of days ago when his team was down, he got the call to go to work, and he worked well. You could see that was the absolute choice at that point by Joe Matt, knowing he was a little bit rusty first time back, 
to get him back out there without the stress and he was good. And I love a first pitch breaking ball from Chris Rodriguez because you can slow it down and you need everything right to be able to stay on top of that one and have downward action. Owen to the count on Haas. Pretty filthy the other night, right? Mm -hmm. It's one of those times too. I wouldn't even mess around. I go right back to another curveball. He did. That's cool. Assuming the other night the game was out of hand, and sometimes when managers are so valuable in their decision making, you love using him when you're ahead, but. Let him get his mind right. Haas tonight struck out a couple of times. Yeah, that's 96. That's just a little bit off the plate. Electric fastball from Chris Rodriguez. On the breaking ball, but not squared up. Lagares puts it away. So good, you can hear the Let's Go Angels chants down below. What a joy it is to have all of you back at the Big A. Nerds. Have new money goals? NerdWallet can help you find the mortgage lender to make them happen. Like getting a low rate on a downtown loft? We can help find the right lender. Or move out of the city since you're virtual now? We can find you loans for that. Want to refinance your home, free up cash, and redo your kitchen slash home office? Yep, we've got tips for that too. Whether you refi or buy, easily discover and compare the smartest mortgage lenders. For all your money questions, turn to the nerds. I was born to be the next big thing. No telling where I'm going, but I'll show you what I mean. Like, na 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 Adio, Jose, Gooby, Sut, and you. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Seven to one, the score. And the baseball is handled, handed over to the veteran left-hander. Now he's been doing it for quite some time since his age 21 season in Toronto. Since 2015 in Detroit, Daniel Norris became a full-time relief pitcher last season during the COVID-shortened season. But has had some big moments in the big leagues as a starter. Yeah, I've always liked his arm. Very good deception in his delivery. Hides the baseball well. How quick that arm action is. 
Goslin pinch hitting base hit coming off the bench and an injury out there at short trying to extend to make that play Goodrum and he has come up very very uncomfortable let's see let's hope he's all right yeah he twisted when you when you backhand with the glove and it turned back on him at in an outfield grass a good young player you hope he's okay but definitely in some pain see how he turned his wrist see that happen a couple times with Anderson Simmons trying to make this exact same play see how he turned with the glove, the glove gets stuck on that grass and it turns around and bends that wrist back. Oh boy, you can tell I was uncomfortable. He's gonna come out to get it treated right away. Yeah, you hate to see that. Kudos to Goslin, by the way, who continues to just chew up and spit out left-handed pitching. He's been such a great addition to this team, but a super get well quick for Nico Goodrum. Yes. Some really special things swinging the bat for the Tigers this year. Pretty solid job at shortstop defense, but that's a tough one. Harold Castro, who can play just about anywhere you need him, hops off the bench, starts throwing it around a bit, and gets loose. Yeah, it's funny with some bad injury luck. Certainly Mike Trout goes down and has been down for a while, but we've seen Anthony Rendon kind of bounce in and out of some pretty bad injury luck. And you find yourself saying something very simple. This team hovers around 500 in part because of Phil Gosselin. Yeah, and he's crushed left-handed pitching. Uh, snuck in there, pinch hit very quietly. Uh, it was a lefty out there. To Gooby's point coming in, that's a ton of success against lefties. Is that one's fair ball? Gosselin on the move, out front of Lagaris. Toward the corner it goes. They'll stop the goose at third. And Lagares with the double. He was 0 for 2. He'll take that. Last seven games, seven hits, and three doubles in his last seven games. From the power of the baseball. Getting the opportunity to play. We know how good he is in defensively in the outfield. Turns on that 92 on the inner half. It gets it right down the line for a double. You know, in the nine on the season, 11 total extra base hits for Lagares. Lagaris at second, Goslin at third. To finish the thought on Goslin, you see him there, bottom shot. Against lefties this year, this is kind of laughable. He's 16 of 35. <laughs> Ren Hifo switch hitter flips it around. Bats from the right side. Homering, obviously he's got some swag, Jose Mota, the way he's played defensively coming back in the big leagues. That homer was fun to watch, too. It was fun to watch, Darren, because it was all about the load up. And Jeremy Reed, Sorrento, John Maley, it's about start early, and you'll see how powerful you are. He got some serious backspin on that ball to right center field. Take a look at this. As he loads up, there has to be a slight pause there. See that? No hesitation. Time to catch up with a baseball spin velocity and separation. Why does every highlight look better with more fans? Oh, it looks great. <laughs> it just, the reaction is so awesome. He goes down and gets that one. And I just love the way they stand up and to see how far a baseball is going to go and travel. I'll push you a little bit deeper, Jose. What do you have for me? Righty, lefty, a switch hitter, and he folk. There, there really isn't much to see in the big leagues this year. What's his stronger side? Right side more consistent because his load up is much simpler. In fact, last year he went to hit right hander against certain right handed pitchers. Mm. Towards the end of last season. You can't sneak one by Jose Mota, folks. Seriously. You've got to pay attention. 
<laughs> Got to survive. <laughs> two and two I the count. I don't recall that game because I was uh, serving as a reporter. And I noticed that uh, when he was started the game, that left handed then uh, for Joe Madden's suggestion in BP, he approached the uh, righty, went up the middle for a base hit, righty on righty. But there was talk, actually, in the offseason, maybe bringing him back to hitting only from the right side. And I'm glad they threw that in the trash. Yeah, it, the key always for Luis Rejico is lay off that break of ball down and in both right-handed and left-handed. Swing it. Rolls that one foul off to the right side. Oh, here we go. He's one of those guys, too, Darren, that you hope that a home run does not sidetrack him. I think you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He's got to go out there and stay with his game, which is line drive and speed. He needs to be a speed guy to have a future in the big leagues, not a fly ball guy. Two and two, the count. Infield drawn in all the way in right side. On the left side, about halfway in. Don't spoil the singles and doubles hitters with homers. Very true. Keep wanting more and more. Any good mom would say, don't spoil the children. Don't spoil those singles and double hitters. Give them too many homes. You know, Gooby and I have had this conversation also about certain pitchers. Struck out 10 or 12. Like, hey, I'm a strikeout guy now. Oh, no. 2-2. Two -two. Chased up. Elevated a fastball. He flipped around to the right side. Snuck one by him up. 93 mile an hour fastball. Everything was down lower third or below. Change eye level down the chase. Well, let's celebrate the night of Justin Upton. Let's celebrate the last three weeks of Justin. But again, tonight, impact. Two runs scored. Double. Check swing double to the right side. Walk run scored. Single run scored. And you know, he's up there first pitch, anticipating. Something secondary first pitch, and if that's the case, it's going to be hit hard. 1900 career game. Great bottom note there. Go back to the simplest of things to describe Major League Baseball. Incredibly hard to describe, hard to get here, even harder to stay. And to play 1800 games. Congratulations to Justin on that milestone. Yeah, he can do a lot of things well. You see that great slide he had at the base two run score showing he still runs very well. Still reads the baseball well. Mm. And he read that pitch off the plate and it was off the plate. <laughs> Has been many pitches missed by Ryan Blackney behind the plate tonight but that one was not a strike. He's been very consistent calling balls and strikes. Justin goes down, base hit left field. One run will score. Jay up with an RBI four times he's been on tonight. Three hits. What a game for Justin Upton. Picking up an RBI after a couple runs scored. An off speed pitch. Don't throw Justin Upton a break of no. all off speed. Everything is going to be hit hard. By the way, I have to get it in one for you. A little uptown funk on the ground for an RBI single. Well, you get that in. I'll, I'll see you that. I'll see you that uptown funk. And if we're playing a, a big time game of cards, as Shohei gets ready to hit, Otani, I'll see you that uptown funk, and I'll raise you a goose is loose. Well done. Shohei takes a strike. Well, I felt bad. There was an injury on his base hit, so the goose had to be grounded for the moment. But he was able to spread his wings and score a run. Spread your wings and fly. One and one the count, eight to one the score. Pretty cool here in the chance in the ballpark here at the big A. MVP.
One one. Take a look back. Statcast, Gooby. This is the home. How quick this baseball got out. Exit velocity of 114.3 miles per hour. This is a launch angle of 18 degrees. That was on the line and out. 3.8 second from the first. Cruising at 17.30 for Shohei. He's getting his exercise, exercise in after pitching last night. Hmm, I wonder what he was trying to do with that swing, folks. What do we think? He's trying to go the other way. Fun graphic that is. I remember that 2000 season for Troy Gloss. You certainly behind the microphone for those two for Mike Trout. I forgot Troy Gloss stole that many bases. Shohei down the left field line toward the corner it goes. But also he has 73 strikeouts on the mound. Three and one record. 2.7 ERA. Every time he puts any ball in the air, everyone comes out of their seats. <laughs> Got him with a breaking ball down and away. That time, Norris wins the battle. Two run homer, a pair of strikeouts, and a flyout tonight. His 20th home. That's a slider to get a swing and miss on him. Look, all he was trying to do on that was just try to punch that to the left. He knew that was a pretty good pitch. It's going to be a strike. Ward, breaking ball, drives it to left field. It's down. Lagares scores. Here comes Upton. Getting his sprints in. Two RBIs for Ward. The party is really on at the Big A. Now 27 RBIs, seven doubles this year for Taylor Ward. Stay down on that baseball, how good he did as far as keeping that head down and tracking the lower third and rocketed left center for a double. Three runs scored for Justin Upton tonight. <laughs> He's had some sprints, by the way. Here's Jared Walsh. 10 to 1, fastball outside corner. He has gotten in his sprints tonight. I mean, he really has. <laughs> He's going, oh, let me think. Uh, I'm going to move around here, stretch around. Like, yeah. Remember, he walked in the third and scored on what was a closer play at the plate on the double from first by Ward. Ward making him work. Shohei. When he hit behind Upton, allowed Upton to back off just a bit with a, a home run that we saw was a little bit over three seconds as they retimed it. Hey, retime a home run. I, I liked your original timing on that one. It felt bright. Walsh hovers the line toward that foul pole. Fifth inning for Jared Walsh. You didn't need a stopwatch to deal with this one. You needed a tape measure. I love his back lip. Boy, he stayed down on that baseball extremely well. Boy, going back to the fans being here at the ballpark today. And last night, too, but it's the excitement level. Everything hitting the air. Everyone's jumping up.
Glass doing a nice job keeping it out front. Bottom half of inning number six. This was a two to nothing game to the bottom half of the fifth. And now, once they get through this inning, and they'd love to add even more, you start counting out. You're at nine. Nine outs to victory. And again, moving back to 500. That one's in the dirt. You kind of gave it away in your trip to the Bay Area, but any team that's maybe destined to play meaningful games in August and September, Got to beat the teams you're supposed to beat. And a good bounce back, too, because you look at those, that series up and open. You could have won all three games. But credit Oakland for their big inning. Big innings late in the game. But sixth inning, it's every night up in Oakland was a difference. But the Angels had a chance every single night. Send of all tomorrow. Willie Peralta, if you make your way out. First pitch 707. Make plans. Hop online, angels.com. Grab your tickets. Come on out. Let's fill this place up. And Patrick's just become this year a treat to watch pitch. In a single game, more swings and misses than anybody in the game. Broke his bat. That's a rule to the right side. Let's go. Little flip. More offense added on. Three more runs. Angels plus nine. Our Carl's Cam replay 35 years ago today. My father, Don Sutton, in an Angels uniform in front of 37,000 Halo fans at 41 years old. Through a complete game, beat the Texas Rangers 5-1. 35 years ago, June 18th, 1986. This ballpark, fabulous memory, certainly. There you are, right there, the greet your dad. 178 career complete games. In a moment, Aaron. That one was a shocker at 41 years yes. old, though. But you know, when you have that many CGs, you, you can just sense it and smell that finish line, and he was able to do that for career victory number 300. Way to get it like that for your dad. That went into right field. Akil Badu, a great story this year, even though it's a 10 1 game. He gets his second time reaching base safely. He also walked in the seventh inning.
Kind of a flat fastball from Chris Rodriguez, and he jumps on it. By the way, the batter in the highlight was Gary Ward, a name many of you older baseball fans remember for strike three. The game took two hours and 13 minutes to play. Talk about you as a ground ball pitcher. He had 14 fly ball outs in that game. Yeah, he was always, I remember that being a fly ball, strikeout fly balls. Harold Castro came on. No word on Goodrum as of yet. Injured his wrist, diving for a baseball at short. One and one the count. Pitchers look on with NB as Castro gets better grip on that bat. He's got it and he's ready to roll. What's that dig me feeling, Gooby, of a complete game? When you had a complete game, how did you feel? Uh, you just feel, you know, you're doing exactly what you, you go out there every four or five days. And your goal going into the game was to shake the catcher's hand after. So when you're able to do that and complete that, it's a great feeling because it means you did everything for your teammates you wanted to do. And you left the guys in the bullpen a little bit of a break. Wow. And a little bit more stick them on that bat. Kira Walsh was trying to catch that in the air <laughs> from space. He got it in a fielding position. He's going to make the play on it. He felt it coming. I mean, he really was concerned about grip. He's going to a spray now. Pitchers are just beyond guns. Yes. <laughs> just cans of things, and rags of tar and sticks that are sticky. Two and two the count. All you can do is smile as a hitter. Meantime, this gifted young arm misses outside. Three and two, the count. What do you recall your earliest reports from down below? Very earliest about this man. I, I knew he had that great moving fastball. Get up there at 98, 99. Great changeup, too, and a good feel for his curveball and, and developing slider. That's a sinker, folks. 96. Looked like a lefty slider. 96 and dove at the plate. That's a two seamer. He's going to be a ground ball type pitcher, even though that he's got electric stuff. He's going to get a majority of his strikeouts with his curveball and his changeup because there's going to be contact made most times with his fastball. That's a great shot there, that lead arm with the glove and the separation. And it's a good distraction for a hitter too because you're seeing that glove and the arm and then the baseball's on you. Omar Mazzara. So we're here with Rodriguez. Let me hypothesize and do it if, if you were to picture him J July next year maybe he's in the starting rotation. What needs to happen in his evolution. You just think quicker outs because he's a high max guy and that means he's going to throw everything he has every pitch it's going to be difficult for him to get to that 110 115 pitch plateau that means it's going to be more difficult to get in that seventh inning for him so if he just thinks with that sink on his fastball hey look for some soft contact first or second pitch and then when you're ahead or if there's a guy in scoring position then you use that electric running fastball and curveball but he has four quality pitches right now that has a chance to be a great Major League starter. It's going to be fun to watch, folks, over the next year or so. A little bit high. One and two, the count.
job. Max keeping it in front of him. Rodriguez in his age 22 season. He's able to only throw because of the major back problems and having to rehab only nine and a third minor league innings in 2019. Just nine total innings. Fastball low and he lost it. So if I'm to hear what you're saying, it's embrace pitching to contact a little bit. Yeah, because especially when you have a power sinker, it's very difficult to get a lot of swing and misses with the pitch. So think towards the end of the bat or on the handle of the bat. Those batters, they can hit a fastball, and especially one in that lower third. Or below that, they're going to put the ball in play. Generally, it's going to be on the ground and embrace that and embrace your defense behind you. It's funny how quickly he evolved as a young player. Remember, fourth round pick in 2016 out of high school in Florida, South Florida, Monsignor Edward Pace. Tony Duff and his coach there. As that breaking ball is a little bit low, but. You watch the journey up to 2016. He was scouted at a, an event in 12 in which he was throwing 68 miles an hour. An event in 14 in which he was throwing 83 miles an hour. Then an event in 15. Going for a travel team called the Royal Scout Team in which he was throwing 92 miles an hour. So evolving. The gifts that he got from above started to show themselves. Getting stronger too. And he's the more he pitches, the better he's going to be as far as his feel for all of his pitches and getting stronger as far as his shoulder. A little bit of a setback with his shoulder this year went on the IL for that. That's a good quick talk by Max Stassi out there on the mound with the youngster. And I like that right away, Max is see, trust me. Trust the movement. If he makes contact, that's towards the end of the bat, and Castro may hit that one at an infield, and you get a double play turn. World foul. Let's take a quick pause for a word from Hyundai. Up to three years of complimentary maintenance. It's yours on every new Hyundai. See that big curveball now from Chris Rodriguez. Couple of runners on, one and two the count. Body spins off, the arm never catches up for that breaking ball. And we were through that one. It was the right pitch, had him set up, muscled up on it. This time it's two and two. He's been winning the race as a rookie pitcher to 0 2. He gets to 0 2 a third of the time. League averages 25% of the time. It's pretty incredible. And 0 2, 26 times this year. Hit hard into center field, ready for that fastball. The Tigers will throw a run on that scoreboard. 10 to 2 is the score. Willie Castro, who had grounded out twice with a single, in an RBI. And he saw that pitch before, curveball overthrown, so he was sitting fastball, and he got it. Keel Badu, who started this inning, comes around to score. 
That's a real good swing by Willie Castro staying back. Sensen, he's going to get a fastball with a pitcher. A young pitcher didn't have a feel for his curveball. Sat fastball, got it, lined it back up the middle. Big shift to pull defensively for Robbie Grossman, who sees a breaking ball. Dip and dive, 0 and 1. I think if he was able to throw that one to Castro, I think he would have got a chase. It's a good two strike breaking ball. Unbelievable pitch one and two. Mike Myers begins to warm in the bullpen. Two and two the count. Chris appears to be once there was traffic out there kind of seeking that strikeout hardcore. A little dip in his velocity. You see a lot of 97 98 been around 95 96. Working up a good lather out there. You see the sweat run down his face. 2 2. We're making him work. 27 pitches for the right hander. Now in his limited time this year he's just getting his feet wet in the big leagues but with no one on base the opponent's OPS is 595 crazy low and with runners on base it's 623 crazy low. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if we see a history of him trying to do too much with runners on. Rolled out to Walsh. There's one. Back to first. Not in time. That would have been about as good as it gets as far as double plays go. A nice job by Rodriguez to get to the bag. Yeah, Grossman runs well, but that was really well done by Walsh to Iglesias back to Chris Rodriguez. Did a nice job of getting to that base. Quick throw by Walsh. This is on the transfer and the stretch. By Rodriguez, and Grossman beats that one out. The thing that Chris Rodriguez did well, he got to the base, and then he goes to stretch to get to the baseball. A lot of times you'll see a pitcher get there, draw in that stretch position, and they aren't able to move either way, left or right. So he got to the bag and then stretched out when he got the throw. Scope, bouncing ball, sends Iglesias back on it. Plays it right at his cap bill. Fires it and over to Ren Hippo for the out. Tonight's seventh inning stretch is brought to you by Ford and the fully electric F-150. Let us all take a look at it together.
and we're back. The seventh inning stretch was brought to you by the Ford Motor Company, built Ford proud. Say that in Michigan, sir. It's an Angels kind of night if you're just joining us. Ten to two is the score. Call to the bullpen, answered by Buck Farmer. Conyers, is Georgia native, the right-hander. Working last night, inning and two-thirds shutout. A couple of strikeouts in that outing. Pretty tough start to his year this year. These are nights where you get it right, Bill. With your team down eight. Here's Max. 0 oh and 1 the count. And Farmer's fastball is 92 96 with a little tailing action, curveball, and a changeup. Georgia Tech, his journey. Fifth round pick, Tigers 2013. Balls and one strike the count. Handful of times Farmer has taken the baseball and been a starter, but the majority of his career has been as a relief pitcher. His finest year, very, very much his finest year a couple of years ago, 2019. 73 appearances of 3 7 ERA. So you've looked at the swing of Max, and it's had a ton of results since he's come back healthy, walked and scored tonight. What are some of the pieces of his swing that, from your eyes, are working? Yeah, real level, up the middle type approach. Still able to turn all pitches for power, but is short through the baseball, right back up the middle, right center also. For Max Dassey, when he first came to the Angels, he was trying to lift a lot. When you were with the Astros, that's Something they really were teaching quite a bit is trying to lift the baseball in the air. He's more on the line now, but still the power is there. If he gets a pitch, it's a mistake pitch. And then it's that whole downhill positive roll, right? When you're driving the baseball, that means you're doing things right mechanically. That means you're on time. That means you're taking close pitches. You're not chasing. I'll throw in a few walks. Yep. Three and two, the count. He's thinking right center. He'll sit back here and line it. Another full count pitch to Stassi hit him. That was a changeup, by the way, just to understand what occurred there. A changeup that just never got there. Try to throw it too much. He just tried to turn that one over to have sink action in. And his wrist is level, and it's going to have that flat lateral run to it, and it hits him right on the tricep. The on base percentage just goes up. He's all right. It was still one of the best lines we read. Jarrett Walsh that one time, his lips saying, hey, good for my on base percentage. That one time he got hit by a pitch. <laughs> as long as you're standing upright and all your teeth are still in your mouth, you can say that. <laughs> and your legs are still under you. Hold that one to the left side. They'll try to get two. And they won't. Iglesias running hard the entire time. This week we're participating in the home run challenge. Every home run in this game raises money for prostate cancer research. So far, $434,000 have been raised in the challenge. You can make a pledge by going to homerunchallenge.org. Again, homerunchallenge.org. Three in one inning for the Halos. Three lefties going yard. Homer and for dad. Here's Goslin. 0 and 1 the count. 
called off the bench stayed in the game singled against the lefty I gave you those crazy numbers against left handers. Almost feels mandatory for Joe Madden that if you have numbers like he has. You have to pitch at him. It's a weapon you have to use. Always making real good hard contact against the left handed pitcher. You now, battle here against the righty. Waves at that pitch down and away. Oslin goes down on strikes. Numbers reverse a little bit against righties. Average right around 200, 205, as we told you, against lefties. Now 16 of 35. Here's Juan Lagares. One line to center field, fly to left field. And then double down into that left field corner. There by Castro. is a paid presentation for Emerald's all-new Pasta and Beyond. Brought to you... Whips a little bit higher because opponents with a low opponent's batting average, those 19 walks have the whip at 1.4. It's hitting just 207 against him this year. Jamer Candelario. 1 0 the count. Six outs to get.
come down to the field for his secondary pitch. Junior whether it's a splitter or his breaking ball. Trying to get that good, consistent release point. Three and oh, the count. Candelario tonight walked, struck out, grounded out. He's an interesting hitter. When he goes 1 0, when he jumps ahead, Candelario 1 0, you think, okay, there goes that batting average. Well, it's only 227 when he jumps ahead 1 0. The at bat goes that way. But the on base is 396. It's almost as if he buckles down. And you're really going to have to earn it. Like that. Had no interest. Jumped ahead 1 0 and earned himself a walk. Miguel Cabrera, the historic one, strides toward the plate. A moment ago was 2908 Jose Moda in his career hit list. Moda's been a fun career. It has been. That uh, ball that he hit to right field with that big slice just tells you the story. But uh, I remember doing an extensive sit down with him years ago. And I asked him who has been the most influential teammate you've had. And he mentioned Pudge Rodriguez. And he said, Pudge Rodriguez would take me into the cage when I was 20 years old in Miami and told me clearly, find a swing at age 20, they can repeat at age 35. And what he taught me was, he said, short to the ball, hands close to the body. And he said, don't be around swinging and trying to change swings. Keep this swing and you'll see that uh, you're going to have a nice career. So the Hall of Famer spoke. Miguel listened and he is on his way himself to also the Hall of Fame. Yeah, Pudge Rodriguez did a real nice job of keeping his hands inside the baseball in line at right side. He still had that power to turn on, but when he had two strikes on him, he could just cover that outside part, especially even on breaking balls and hit the right field. When you think about this movie, have you ever seen Miguel Cabrera swinging wildly? Just don't see it. No. Even when he misses pitches, he's just missing by just a bit. Popped up right side, Walsh gives it a run. Into foul territory. Makes that play look easy as he stands underneath it, it dies in his glove. Well, you practice that enough, and he's constantly doing that. He's always on the field working on his fielding craft, whether it's pop ups or ground balls or turning that 3 6 3 or 3 6 1 potential double play. Solid by Jared Walsh. Made it look easy. So going back to that, Darren, you know, how about Jared Walsh in terms of changing his career around and changing his approach when he told me last year, he goes, Albert Pujols, Mike Trout, watching them and talking to them is what got me to understand more and more what the short approach is all about and minimizing movement. As we talk about the connection, obviously, between Miguel Cabrera and Punch Rodriguez. Teammates, man, they matter a whole lot, especially early in your career. You have to choose to watch and watch with humility, right? And then you have to be able to engage and ask questions because not all of us can replicate what we see. And kudos to Walsh for doing that. It's a perfect tie in between. Pudge and his influence on Cabrera. That's a long time ago if you think about it as Haas goes down on strikes. That's that's one of the more fun teams. You have to be a pretty big baseball fan and follow baseball pretty closely. But that world championship team beating the Yankees in the fashion they did. Yeah. And you look back you think of Pudge. OK where was Pudge if you do the math in your head. He still was only 31 on that team. Yeah it's a great leader. Is that Josh Beckett in that game. What he pitch on what three day rest. Finish off the Yankees. Speck had a really solid career himself. But to Jose's point, Miguel Cabrera that year brought up. There's only 20 as Badu gives that one a ride. All sorts of room for Lagares as he puts that one away. Three outs to get for a Halos victory.
Top tier play presented by Arco. All sorts of home runs. Arco, glad to bring them to you. Oh, 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 oh boy. Jared Wall says, hold on. I'd like to play in your game as well. It's been fun tonight. Yes. Some really good, impressive swings for the Halos. Remember, Anthony Rendon getting close, maybe in the lineup tomorrow. Jimenez. A couple of years ago, three seasons to be exact. An all star for the Tigers. Get some work in against Ren Hefal. Pours it over the outside corner for a strike. 92 97 slider change up. Likes to change up the lefties. Fastball runs in. Sunday, Casey Mize is on the mound. 1 1 a couple of years ago in the draft. One overall pick of the Tigers, Dylan Bundy against Casey Mize. As we mentioned tomorrow, 7 o'clock if you're coming out. Patrick Sandoval's on the mound. So we'll go ahead and make that decision. He's at angels.com. Grab some tickets that suit you. And watch. What do you like to call him? The Sandman? The Sandman. Your name for him? The Sandman of Can. Can he? Yes. Okay. <laughs> One and two the count. And Hefo rolls it to the right side. Let's go. In time for the out. Help Mike Trout. Shohei stay on top in the Google MLB All-Star ballot. And kind of gives a give a nudge to Walsh though too. Yes. Daily at MLB.com slash vote. And on Google by searching for their names to send them to Colorado. Yeah, Walshquit now. 33 extra base hits. 48 RBIs. Shohei Otani, of course. Announcing he's going to the home run derby. I think Justin was visited by some sort of an insect. Yeah, he wasn't too fond of that. He didn't call for that. What's hey, whoa. A moth going it literally in landed. I think it landed on his face. Did I see that correctly? The 1 0. -0. Justin had a moth land on his face. Just kind of thinking of Silence of the Lamb. I was a little nervous about that. I, I can't think of any way that might be less comfortable to hit 95 than with a bug in your face. Yes. Of course, yes, another one. I understand <laughs> that. Another bug. Justin Upton extends, takes it into the corner. Shohei Otani, a couple of years ago in Colorado. I'm handing the mic to you in this one. You lived it, you breathed it with him, BP in Denver. And I, I've never seen anything like this. It was amazing just to sit back there behind the batting cage to see how far these baseball are going. Colorado Rockies guys were coming out of the dugout to look at these home runs. Check out Gooby, by the way. I know, let's take a little Gooby, peek at that one. All suited up. <laughs> he hits above, baseball's up in the third deck. That's above the bullpen. You look good that day. That one over the outside corner for a strike. Owen won the count. <laughs> Wally Joyner in 86. 
Garrett Anderson in 03, Vlad Guerrero, home run derby champions. This reaction in the stands here at the Big A. Shohei Otani, when he comes to the plate, he expects some magic. Magic again for Otani. 21 home runs, as usual. Jose Iglesias right out there to greet him. Picked up a W on the mound. And still his hair is in fantastic shape. W last night going six. Two home runs today. The smart hitter. You always go stand by your hitting coach. <laughs> wow. That's incredible opposite field power for Otani. It's a shocking to see what Shohei Otani does every night, whether the plate or on the mound. It's just, it's incredible. Ward fouls it off. Love the sound off the bat. Love the roar of the crowd even more. Oh, oh, tries to dump that one into center field. He does. On the backside of that, very important to point out, Taylor Ward has a three-hit night with the walk, four times reaching safety. Continue successes in many ways are just important, just as important as what Shohei's doing. This team continues to wait for Mike Trout to return, hopes that it's happening soon. But guys like Ward are huge. Here's Walsh, two-run homer in the fifth inning. You're almost kind of wondering if Shohei Otani was going to be in the lineup today after the six innings last night. You know, he had a dive for that bunt, cover first base on a ground ball, walked twice, was trying to steal a bag three different times in that same inning on foul balls by Taylor Ward. And yet he still comes out and does this tonight. A rocket home run to the right center, a home run to the left center. And now the score was 10 to 2. You could obviously say, hey, take this last at bat off. No, not Shohei. He wants to be out there for his teammates every night. One and two the count. It's a wildly popular name. We all know him, right? But outside of our little vacuum in Southern California, he is being talked about endlessly. I'm still going to get back to you. You don't know how difficult it is to pitch again. 
and throw like he did last night. Your, your legs, your back, your ribs, everything is sore. And then the very next day, you're out there swinging a bat and dealing with 90 plus mile an hour fastball, secondary pitches, and you still manage to hit two home runs the very next day, where most starting pitchers are getting there running in the outfield and they're exercises it. See why as his career <laughs> as his career evolved, Babe Ruth decided I'll just hit. Walsh went around on that breaking ball that time. Shohei Otani, home run number 21 in the season. A screamer to lock to right, a screamer to left, using the whole ballpark. This ballpark loving what they see in him. Every time he steps up to the plate, oh goes into his windup, or runs one down, he, oh, you won't see a better one than that. he competes not only against the other team, but against the toughest adversary, himself. MLB Tonight, where the best outdo their best on MLB Network. Wake up for a full day of baseball on MLB Central, featuring an all-star lineup of hosts and a colorful cast of guests all season. The fun never stops on MLB Central. Weekday mornings, 10 Eastern, only on MLB Network. Shohei Otani with home run number 21, leaving Tatis and Guerrero each with 22. Shohei with 21. Shohei slugging 636, trailing only Tatis and Guerrero in slugging percentage on the season. But again, when we talk about this individual as a pitcher, he also has been spectacular this year. He's done it both. Those 73 strikeouts, 73 strikeouts yes. and 53 and a third. It's funny, I had to run over to Mark Langston again. I said, remember when we used to start, how sore you were the <laughs> next day? <laughs> you were, you know, you were just happy to jog and feel good about that, maybe play some catch. Well, he's not only playing a little catch the next day, he's hitting home runs, two of them tonight. So he's hit 21 and given up five homers. Make sure I see this. I wonder if he, how many hits he's given up this season, period, on the mound. I can help you. I'm right here on that fresh page if you'd like to know. Yes, I would love to know. Well, partner, how about 33? So he's given up 33 hits. <laughs> he's hit 21 home runs. Then more extra base hits, and he's allowed hits on the mound this year. Here are misses low and away to Harold Castro. He now has 39 extra base hits. 30. Nine. The batting average higher than the ERA. That one sails up and away. Three and two the count. Yeah, he dropped on Instagram. I'm going home run derby. I'll, I'll again encourage you to go check it out. On the gram, as Gooby likes to call it. Oh yes. Uh, you know this. They announced that. I'm going, uh, by the way, I'm going to be a participant in home run derby. Then you hit two home runs. Right. In the same game here tonight. I mean, it's just 
Yeah, and, and casually talk about, you know, the cut action on that pitch and what he's trying to do. And yeah, sinker and the hit didn't quite sink. You know, I hit it about 4 30. And uh, Sandoval said, you know, remember that hit I got the other day when I was squared around the bun and it, you know, Butcher Boy base hit? I, I got a hit. I don't know what my exit velocity was, but I hit it pretty good. If I can get a little serious and dramatic, you're looking at two really important pieces to this team in different ways. As pitchers. Yeah. Those two dudes right there that are hanging out smiling having fun tonight. Huge keys for this team staying competitive this year and building in the next year. Three and two the count. And extends the talented left hander. The gifted right hander Fletch. Yeah, Fletch has always got to be around there. Little sneaky stealth <laughs> Fletch. Just getting into that conversation with the pitchers. Fletch, you know better. Get away from the pitchers. <laughs> Come back to my Hyundai key for the game tonight. Roll me away. Well, four home runs away away against the Tigers tonight. Some power. Some good productive swings. 11 runs. Balance who had Upton, Ward, amongst all those other home runs by two by Shelby Otani, Renhipo, Walsh. Great balance in the lineup tonight. Pitch is low. 1 0 the count. Kind of excited for your key to the game on Sunday, I have to be honest. You've hinted it, it's something tied to the Motor City. Always got to bring that in there. Motor City. It's Greek Town, Hamtramck, or the Joe. I'm not quite sure what artist it could be. Is it Motown? Is it hip hop? Got to stay tuned. Is it Eight Mile? Two and up. Two and one the count. Back to 500 this team will return once they notch those three outs up on the scoreboard. And then you try to turn north and you move past with the the goal of never returning. You're not making it out to the yard. I want to encourage you to make it out to the yard. You should listen to tomorrow's game with Terry Smith, Mark Langston, which is Radio AM 830. Catch it on television with Alex Faust and Mark Sweeney. And it's fireworks night. It is fireworks night. How about you bring your radio out, listen to T. And then check some fireworks out. That one slips on by. A shift was on. Tigers making some noise here in the ninth. Down nine. For Mazzara, that's the third time he's been on. He's a couple of singles and a walk. Willie Castro. No one won the count. The All Star game has turned out to be an evolved over the last generation. It's not just the last few years, but generation to where that home run derby, that All Star workout is such an event. I mean, that's kind of the, the party event of the All Star yeah, the game. Red car carpet show. Different outfits the players are wearing. And 
the wonderful opportunity twice you know two in Milwaukee and in 11 in Chase Field to be the on field host of the home run derby and uh, here the crowd and it's just a party Gooby you yes. know it's a party folks are having a blast they're out early to watch BP players are doing in in house interviews over the it's great watching guys root for the other players hitting home runs teammates even friends watching them crush it. it's going to be a blast watching Shohei Otani in that home run derby contest. As far as that one's rolled to the right side, they'll go to the bag on top of the bag. Run will score. This decision by Jared, he took the out that was right there in front of him. Yeah, that's all you're looking for is outs at this point of the game. You don't want to give away an out when you're trying to make a play and throw it a second to maybe get wide. Even though it's a good lead, you don't want to take the chance, give them any momentum, not only in this game, but in the tomorrow's game. Looking to make it 8 of 11. And a return to 35 and 35, 500. Here's Jonathan Scope. Thought I was trying to think of Denver. It's a pretty walkable city from where everyone stays. I'm sure they'll have buses that take the guys from the hotel. I just want to make sure I, there, there are no, I don't think, transit trains we have to worry about. I think he'll get there. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure of that way. He'll get there and yes. get off at the right stop. Yes. 1 0 the count. Pretty breaking ball, one and one the count. These are moments where pitchers are a little further down in the depth chart like Junior. This means everything to him. The last thing he wants to do is see any of his mates start to warm up out there. Fastball, one and two, the count, one strike away. Scope not interested in offering at that one. Jonathan reached on an error in the sixth inning. Was just grounded out a couple of times and struck out. They have managed to quiet him, and few have of late. It's a very effective pitch by Alex Cobb against his former teammate running it in on the fastball. 2 2 bouncing ball left side gobbled up on across the diamond. The Angels step back strong to 500 behind Shohei Otani's bat and the arm of Alex Cobb. The yes. Angels victorious 11 3. A lot of balance in this game. You love what you saw at the top of the order. Justin up and doing what he's doing best. Three more runs scored. Shohei Otani, though, the story with two home runs today. Four total in the game for the Halos. Ren Heepo home run. Walsh, two by. Otani, Upton, great game. Taylor Ward, great game. Nice job behind the play by Max Stassi, work with Alex Cobb. But story once again, as always, Shohei Otani. Incredible game again after getting that W last night on the bump. Screamer to right. I mean, a close line homer to right and a close line homer to left. Just straight string homers. I mean, that ball was rocket the right center. And then he goes left center field. I mean, we able to hit two home runs like that 
You're using the entire field with that power for Shohei Otani. This is a beautiful swing and a great night for the Halos and Shohei Otani. What do you say we hear from Shohei Otani? Shohei, Ipe, Jose down below. Guys, take it away. Thanks, Darren. Well, uh, today you accept the invitation to participate in the Home Run Derby. How proud are you of that, and uh, what does it mean to you? How big is that for you? The fact that he's in the Home Run Derby? Home Run Derby, what do you mean? 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 Now, obviously, there's going to be a bunch of power hitters, guys with a lot of power, so I want to test myself with those guys. I'm really excited for that. As we talk about your game, how are you balancing things out? How much more fun is it to be able to pitch and hit and be able to be more involved offensively pretty much every single time? まあ、I feel like this is something that I should have been doing for my rookie year and on, but obviously the injuries held me back, but now I'm back on track, doing what I love to do, so so far it's been really great. You're really diligent with your swing mechanically. Tell me about the different swings approach, right center field, Uchuka, you taught me, and left center field, Suchuka. 今日、宇宙間と左中間にホームランありましたけど、アプローチの違いは何だったんでしょうか。もう常にセンターに狙って、マートはコースに寄って、左右に飛んでくれたらいいかなと思ってます。My approach is constantly trying to go to center field, so depending on where the ball is located, it might go to 左中間 or 宇宙間, left center, right center, like you said, so that's my approach. Thanks for teaching me. One more thing. For the fans, now that the stadium is open, how much does that mean to you? あの、制限解除されてどうですか? Yeah, I'm really happy, but I think we can fill it up even more, and get more guys in here, and root for the team, so I'll be looking forward to seeing more guys in the stands. Ipe, Choi, arigato, matane. Well, he gets it done in so many ways. And by the way, he's the coolest Japanese teacher right there. Shohei Otani goes right center field. He goes left center field. The Angels rebound, too. Remember. It was a tough series over in Oakland. And so far, they've done what they needed to do against these Tigers. Stay tuned because Patrick O'Neill, Darren Gooby, and yours truly, we're going to break it all down as the Angels take this series here from the Tigers and try to do it that tomorrow. We'll be right back.